All right, so listen. So has Shay's aura put him into the top five? Are we ready to make that? that <laughs> Off the aura, not the thirty points per game, not the elite efficiency. <laughs> it's the aura. <laughs> that's it. Always comes back to that. It always comes back to the aura. I feel like that's the that's his like foundational skill. Yeah, mm. it's his elite skill that he has over everybody. He's just the coolest <laughs> guy in the NBA. And off that alone, he's probably top five. I've like been that. saying he was top five for a minute, but I wasn't talking about that aura. But hey, if you know me, I am all about that aura. Uh, no, <laughs> listen, we, we know, listen, when it comes to Shea, we know you famously yeah, yeah. put the, put the shandies on your face. Okay, relax. No one <laughs> knows that. Everybody knows that shit is on Everybody wax. Knows that. <laughs> 100 000 people saw that. <laughs> 4K. Oh <my> God. <laughs> yeah, Welcome to episode 70. As you hear by Donovan's intro, we're going to talk about Shake Goodus Alexander today at length, especially because the main topic of the episode as you guys saw is we're going to grade every team. Don't pause me on that by the way. I see you guys giggling. <laughs> No, I was, nah, I was, nah, we good, we good, we good. <laughs> the main topic today is we're going to grade every NBA team's young core. Obviously, there's some teams that don't really have a young core that we're going to gloss over, but every other team we're going to go through and kind of check in on where their stable of young players are at. But before that, before we get to that main thing, a couple teams we're going to talk about because they've been in the news recently. Like I said, Shay and the Thunder are one of them. Also, we got to talk about the Lakers, bro. Let's do it. Let's do it. I've been waiting stomach. on this. I've been waiting on this. <laughs> yeah. Because it's not be a fun conversation. I had my victory lap after the season tournament. It is, it is going to be a no fun longer. conversation. <laughs> now, <laughs> I love yeah, it. Exactly. I love it because listen nah. again. Because like Isaac came in here and was telling us after they won the end season tournament, oh my god, <laughs> this team they're gonna they're gonna do it. Like they're probably better than we thought. If if they lock in, it's probably just going to be them and the Nuggets. No, I didn't and say that. <laughs> <laughs> he said that they were the second coming of Showtime. Right. That's what he said. <laughs> oh my god. Let's and relax. now. <laughs> They just, listen, we're going to talk about the Thunder winning games. The Lakers continue to lose games at a very, very fast rate. And I love it. And it is yeah, fantastic. Man. I don't know. If you're here watching me. on YouTube, drop a like and subscribe. Run this up for us. For the audio platforms, leave us five stars. Leave us a review. Follow us on all socials. Yeah, man. Let's talk about the Lakers. <laughs> the cranium is crazy. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, I really don't know, don't know what to say. Crayon eaters rejoice! Look at this in-season tournament banner. The most Mickey <laughs> Mouse banner completely <laughs> invalidated the tournament not even two months after it happened. Okay, relax. What a, what a <laughs> fake chip. He's just getting off his hate right now. What Back. a meaningless He's relishing stretch in of basketball game. <laughs> uh, so, like we said, they won the season tournament with the four seed. We're looking great. He came up here and said, they're putting it together at the right time. We see what LeBron can do in big games. He was dominating, made Zion Williamson look silly. And they proceeded to go 3-8 and eight over the next 11 games. <laughs> it's been horrible. Good God. A lot of people have been saying for like the past year and a half that they hate Darvin Ham. You know, every team blames their coach for all their issues. And I've kind of been on the side of like, he was really good in the playoffs. Let's relax. It's not all on him. I changed my fucking mind. They've convinced Damn. me he's been horrible this year, bro. He's been legitimately awful. It's crazy. Okay. So for non-Lakers fans like myself who don't necessarily pay attention to rotations and minutes and all that necessarily all the time, what specifically makes Darvin Am awful? I see the meme of him just keeping his hands in his pockets the entire yeah. time, which is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> but that could mean a lot of things. Break it down. Yeah. From, well, break that it down that doesn't me. mean shit. He just likes to keep his hands warm. <laughs> I don't care about that. <laughs> but that's the common joke is that people say that because he doesn't do anything they feel like. They feel like he doesn't like... I don't know. Like you said, a lot of NBA fans don't really know what goes into coaching. They kind of just pick on their coach Facts. regardless. They assume. But I think last year in the playoffs, he was legitimately a great coach. He outcoached Taylor Jenkins, outcoached Steve Kerr, coached circles around them, and just destroyed their offense by deploying Anthony Davis in creative ways. So I was always defending him. But this year, man, coming into the season, the Lakers were known to be built off of, uh, what's the word? Uh, chemistry, or what's it called uh, when you had the same players as last year? Con continuity. Continuity, yeah. there you go. That's the word I'm searching for. Continuity is what the team preached. SAT and word. There you go. I don't know why I <laughs> lost my mind. That's what we talked about the Lakers. Like, oh, they got this, this team that they built the deadline. Another year of that. They made the conference finals. Let's build on top of that. But coming into this year, that continuity is out the door because this man hates Austin Reeves. Benched him early in the season to separate him and D'Lo in the starting lineup, which was fine. <sighs> But then later on in the season, he benched D'Lo and didn't start Austin Reeves again. And now they're starting LeBron with three wings and Anthony Davis. Basically starting four power forwards 
with LeBron at point guard, going full defense, and continuing to not play their third best player. So all the chemistry they built off of last year with Austin Reeves taking a big leap is out the door. No more continuity, and this team just has zero identity. And it just makes you think, like, what was even to be gained after that run last year if you throw all of it out the window? Yeah. Now, when it comes to benching Austin Reeves, I I don't want to say I agree with that move because he's been a completely different player since he's been benched. Um, but now benching D'Lo on top of that after we all, we've all known D'Lo to be a just wildly inconsistent player ever yeah. since he came, he left Brooklyn. That's just been the name of his career so far. But benching uh, benching D'Lo and just having guys like Torian Prince, who's a good shooter, but no one's ever going to say he's one of the best shooters or a serious threat or a sniper. Starting along, starting Cam, Cam Reddish alongside him, too, who's been known his entire NBA career and also college career has been wildly inconsistent. And then having Jared Vanderbilt and AD play next to each other, too, like it just seems like a really, really wonky fit. And I can mm-hmm. just tell that there's this constant scrambling and there's right you hit it on the money there is no identity if you tell me what this Lakers team is good, is good at what is their one two three punch what's their co- go-to combo other than defense i don't know what to tell you yeah, yeah well their, their defense isn't even that great anymore it's really falling off i'm actually seeing right now so we start recording this right when the miami versus lakers game started on wednesday right now austin Reeves is starting actually because i think Rui's out this game he got hurt oh, actually never mind they benched jared vanderbilt thank god so maybe i'm speaking too soon maybe tonight we're seeing the the correction of that, because I know last episode we talked about it and I was talking about how Jared Vanderbilt just can't play with Anthony Davis. It's not going to work with Jared Vanderbilt's lack of shooting. Apparently, Mr. Hands and Pockets Man agrees because tonight they're starting Austin Reeves, <laughs> Torian Prince, Cam Reddish, LeBron, and Anthony Davis. So maybe our prayers are being answered and maybe they're going to come out looking better. Regardless if, of the fact. If, if, if this is the case, though, right, move, moving forward, what are you going to do with Jared Vanderbilt? Because if, like, if the rest of the roster construction relies on having LeBron, Austin Reeves, and Anthony Davis out there. And if you put Vanderbilt out on the floor, right? I was I was somebody who thought that their defense was going to be able to be good enough to to kind of, you know, drive them through the playoffs. How do you feel about Vanderbilt's spot on this team? Obviously like it just, it's just shaky now because if he yeah. legit, if he legitimately isn't playable with everybody else that they have, what's next for the Lakers? I think he has to be used as a backup for... He, he can't play big minutes, obviously. That goes without being said. I think he has to play a lot of minutes with Christian Wood, who can space the floor a little bit. And yeah, you just got to use him as a backup four that can essentially play the minutes AD isn't there and occasionally play spot minutes next to AD, <coughs> but it can't be done in large portion at all. Which, like you said, defense was supposed to propel them and make them a contender. I don't see well where they're an elite defense without Jared Vanderbilt. So I think that puts into question the entire point of their team, right? Like they have to really change some shit up. And I don't know if I see a championship ceiling if they can't get a great defense because their offense is terrible. It's just not a good offensive team. And I don't really see that changing with the personnel on this team unless they make a huge move to get a Zach Levine, to get a whoever else of that ilk. You know what I mean? And that's what I was just going to say. Maybe it's time that you, Isaac, open your heart, open your arms up to someone like a Zach Levine again. <laughs> I'm hoping, listen, bro. Hey, are you open enough for a, someone like a DeJounte Murray? Fuck no. <laughs> that, would, that would be terrible that would be awful that would be awful that's just like he's a very different player he can shoot a little bit he's not Russell Westbrook but he's closer to Russell Westbrook than he is to Zach Levine in terms of fit next to LeBron and AD like he can shoot he can spot up but he's not like a a spacing shooter he's not coming off of screens he's not going to be someone that's really respected and really scratches the defense like he needs a ball in that's the not his bag yeah, yeah I agree, not I agree. that's a troll he, yeah, but well, you say that, but a lot of people really like that, including some Lakers fans really want that to happen just because, like, they see great guard defense. They see... They're down bad. What do you oh, think? God, they, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're, they're down horrible, but, like, I think the reason it's not working next to Trey Young is because DeJounte needs the ball in his hands to thrive, and you put him next to somebody else make him a shooting guard, and you really minimize what makes him great and make the fit weird. That would be even worse next to LeBron James. Yeah. <sighs> Honestly, it sounds like you guys need something to happen and work badly with Zach Levine. He's already said before in the past, like he would love to play in not only LA, but also play next to a player like LeBron James. I believe he said that, said that all along All-Star weekend a couple of years ago. But besides the point, if you are going to do something, make a play for Zach Levine, who do you guys think should be on the table for the Lakers? That's it's, hard. It's D-Lo, really, yeah. It, yeah D-Lo it's, and it's Rui. Really, it's really everybody, listen, everybody outside of LeBron and AD, 
you guys, you yeah. guys can go can go somewhere else. That, that's really how. Yeah, that's that's how I feel about any move for the Lakers. Is that we mm. that is the core three. Everybody else is kind of replaceable because, like Isaac has been saying, the identity of this team is in serious jeopardy because what you thought you were going to put, you know, lean your hat on going in, into the off season, that is no longer a viable path for you to get a championship. So, yeah, we we're gonna shake it up. Right, Some, something's gonna happen. One of you guys is gonna be moving into a new apartment in the next two months. So <laughs> a new apartment. So you gotta They're figure gonna it out. They're gonna be on Craigslist. They're gonna be on apartments. hundred percent on Zillow. Zillow. <laughs> yep. Call your realtor. Right. Don't book plans for All Star Weekend. You're probably gonna get traded around that time. That's what's gonna yeah, happen. The, the, the Lakers are currently down twenty to nine. So that starting lineup is getting around the floor so far. So we'll we'll see by the end of the game. Like I, I guess we can't talk too in depth about this issue since. In real time, it might be changing, but the fact that it yeah. took so long is frustrating. Like the kill is just pull up on the screen right now that says, when filtering out lineups that have played 150 plus possessions, the Lakers have a lineup of D'Lo, Max Christie, Torian Prince, LeBron, and AD, and it's the 10th best lineup in the entire NBA. Now, these small sample size lineup data can be fluky. Like it's probably not that many possessions. It's probably just over 150. But I think it's been clear that this is the type of lineup they should be playing, not this four wings and LeBron bullshit. So the fact that we wasted like seven straight games trying to make that work, well, that a combination of different lineups, but you know, not playing Austin or D'Lo together in the starting lineup, not playing either one of them, the fact that so many games are wasted and so much just ground is lost in the standings, it's ridiculous. Yeah, exactly, Crazy. man. Listen, another team relying on Cam Reddish, that's tough. I feel sorry <laughs> for you, man. I, I, went, I feel your pain, brother. I went through the exact same thing like four years ago. I thought he was the one. <laughs> I never thought that shit. I mean, he, great. He's he had a good defensive season. Good for him. The offense is so inconsistent that it's hard to... He has to be your worst offensive player in that lineup. And if he's out there with Jared Vanderbilt, he's not the worst offensive player, which <laughs> is tough. very scary. That's the best way to put it. <laughs> Can you pull up Jared Vanderbilt stats for me to kill on Stat Muse? Let's, let's see those. Because earlier in the oh season, he was gosh. averaging one point per game. I think he might have doubled that. I think so. It's, it's on the, he's <laughs> on the, the up two. and up. Got to jump. Yep. Just Listen, barely, though. If he stays on this pace, maybe we can get to four. Double that, <laughs> get to eight, right? He's feeling Who dangerous. 2.6 points per game, 4.1 hey. rebounds, 0.8 assists, 37% true shooting percentage. Woke up feeling dangerous. <laughs> How is that possible? Fuck if wow. I know. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. And it's funny because before he averaged like eight. So like the fall off isn't like it's but six listen, points per game. But look, but the last five games. The last five games. He's averaging five point four points per game. That's the doubling that we're talking about, right? That's the exponential growth that we need from Jared Vanderbilt. <laughs> Again, we can get this to eight point two, nine point seven, maybe. We're cooking. We, we okay, nine point seven. Now we're talking for real. That's a real player. <laughs> That's that exponential growth. He is our savior. That's exponential <laughs> growth. Man. Absolutely. Do you guys have any faith anymore that this team can make a serious playoff push? Like, right now they're a play-in team. And last year, you know, they were a play-in team that did well in the playoffs, made it to the Western Conference Finals. And we thought, building off of that, you know, the fact they could win that many playoff series in a row, we thought maybe that makes them, like, oh, you know, top five or six seed going into the next year. Maybe that's who they are again. Maybe they're also, this year, a play-in team that can potentially make a run. Do you have any faith that they can be higher than a playing team at this point? A little oh, bit. Oh, man. A, a little bit. It's going to depend on on matchup. Uh, like, so if they get into the playoffs via the play-in and they're the 7 or 8 seed, let's say that, let's say that they're the 8 seed because the, the one scenario where I have a little bit of faith in them to make a run is if they get matched up against the Timberwolves because their offense is not some crazy juggernaut like the like the Nuggets, like the Thunder. And, yeah. so, if, and so if you get into a series where – hey, both of these offenses are mid and we're just going to play defense, then maybe that's a way that Vanderbilt can be on the floor and affect the game in a positive way. And, right, like, if, if yeah. that happens, right, if that happens, we'll see how Cat performs in a playoff setting again, right? If everything falls their way, I wouldn't be shocked if we come out of the first round and it's Lakers-Minnesota and the Lakers end up winning in seven, right? Like, that's prob that's probably the path for them to get to the second round at this point. Yeah. I like and, that. Bro, Minnesota is dangerous too. Like I, I, I know that's, probably yeah. their be that's their best matchup, but it's not a good one. Like, I don't know if the Lakers will be favored. Well, they probably would cause there's a lot of money behind LeBron. So like maybe they would, but I don't know if they should be. Yeah. 
I don't know. To be honest with you, I feel like at this point of the season, we're almost halfway into the season mark. We're like 30, 30, 34, five games into the season or whatever. Yeah. And at this point, I think it's I don't want to say it's too late to build an identity because we already saw the Lakers transform their season a year mm-hmm. ago, midseason after the whole Russ overhaul thing. And I think it's about time that they try to do the same thing, re- do some rekindling and Unless they do that and trade for someone like Zach Levine, because their offense is just so deep in the mud, I don't know how. I don't. I don't envision a world in where they get anywhere above like the seventh seed. And I think yeah, the eighth seed is the best real. Is the most real scenario for them. They were tw- I, last time I checked, they were twenty third in offense. That's with LeBron playing all but one or two games, with AD playing all but one or two games. That's been the main talking point people have been talking about is like, how do you squander AD playing some of the best basketball of his life and a healthy LeBron still playing at a top 10, top seven level? That's ridiculous to be 17 and 17 with those two guys healthy. The only thing that screams to me is utilization of the players around them. Because if everybody came to the year thinking these were an interesting group of role players that could put something together, well, maybe a lot of those role players are overrated. Like Rui had a crazy shooting season in the postseason. Maybe Austin Reeves started slow. He got people thought he'd make a bigger jump than he really is. D'Lo still has some clout bias, whatever. Maybe the players are overrated to some extent, but not this bad, right? Like they they should be better than this. So that just screams to me that they're being utilized in all the wrong ways. Mm, yeah, that's a great that's a great analysis of that too. And with that being said, I think it's time. I don't I I don't think the Lakers should go ahead and necessarily fi- fire someone like Darvin Ham. I think he's on that fraud you've watch, already though. done. He's on. He should be watch. on fraud watch for sure. hundred percent. This season doesn't turn around and they end up being 40 and 30, 42 or something like that, then he shouldn't, he probably shouldn't be the head coach of this oh, team. Oh, he get fired Because for it's sure. inexcusable. Inexcusable yeah. at that point. No, for sure. His his job definitely hangs on the balance of how the season ends and how they recuperate over the second half of the season. Because like I said, he has some goodwill from what he did in the playoffs. But, you know, everybody's under a microscope all the time in the Lakers organization. You just have that level. Nick, you'll pull up a hilarious tweet. I don't know. I guess I shouldn't make too much light of it. But I don't, okay. I just, just keep moving. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> All right, man. Uh, but yeah, Lakers bright. are fucked. We'll see. They get, listen, a few weeks ago, they had a very high stretch where we saw the best version. Now we're seeing the worst. To TBD, which version of them is the real version? But my hope is getting smaller and smaller as the weeks go on, unless they make a big trade. Straight Let's talk pain, about a man. more positive team. The Oklahoma City Thunder. Let's talk about the, it. <sighs> Did you guys have to watch the game versus Boston yesterday? Yeah, I yeah, watched I, towards yeah, I, w- I went back the fourth. and watched it after the stream. I just watched great. the fourth. Dude, great game. Obviously, one of the more hyped up games of the year. People have been talking about it nonstop because OKC has been on a very hot stretch lately. They are currently 8-2 and two in the last 10, rising up the standings. Only one game behind the Timberwolves now for the one seed. There's obviously been a lot of narrative talk about Chet Holmgren potentially being an all-star. He's currently second in DPOI odds. He's absolutely him right now. And Jalen Williams is also like making that clear superstar leap. He had 36 the other night, I think, against the Timberwolves. And those two combined have been all over the headlines. But even more so than that, the Shea Gildas Alexander hype is through the roof. He's currently been talked about as making that leap to being in the conversation for top five player in the league. Bill Simmons won his podcast. The biggest Celtics homer in the world. Famously Celtics homer. And he said that he thinks Shea Gildas Alexander has passed Jason Tatum as a top five player. And he, he knows feel? ball. He, he does knows not know ball. ball. He does not. But in this scenario, he might be right. How do y'all feel about this topic? <laughs> I've been saying this since we had episode 68 in person. In our top 30, I'm like, you know what? I've seen enough. I'm ready to crown Shea as one of the five best basketball players in the entire world because he's made leaps and he's gained my trust as a fan in terms of game on the line and can you take my team over the mountaintop and over the hump through whatever the team needs bend your game mold your game in a certain way to help take my team over the top he's done that and i haven't seen someone like jason tatum do that Jason seems a great player that has nothing to do with jason tatum being bad whatsoever it's just about sheer greatness and how much he's able to elevate this this guy (laughs) listen i i love shit and right now, outside of Curry, Shea is my favorite player in the league. Ooh, I think we, okay. I think, I think we need to relax though, like, and, <laughs> and, not, relax. Not, and not necessarily relax, but slow down. We have gotten into a habit, and I, I'm at fault of this as well, right? I did the same thing with Tyrese Halliburton uh, like three weeks ago, 
I was like, Tyrese is easily, right, a top three point guard. And now, two weeks removed, you're like, okay, you know, we can actually start having debates about who's such and such, this and that. I think that Shea is fantastic. I think that he is going to live up to whatever expectations that you have of him in the playoffs and moving forward for the rest of the season, all that. I think he's an MVP candidate 100%. Let's just relax, though, because <laughs> top five, top five would mean... If we just go right now, Jokic, Giannis, Luka, Curry, and then according to you guys, Embiid. And if you guys are willing to say that he's better than who on that list to make him top five? No, I I don't don't necessarily go there either, but I agree it's a little too fast, but it's understandable. I mean, it's it's debatable, right? Like, People are going to say Curry probably. That's the most popular pick is saying that Luca and Shea both passed him up because he's having a down year yeah. statistically. I, I wouldn't agree. I'm going to wait and give Curry some benefit of the doubt too. I'm not going to hold his team performance against him too much. But it's not crazy, I think, at this point. Like you said, he's a legit MVP candidate, right? Yeah. I, and it's too soon to say he's definitively a top five player. But if you think he's an MVP candidate, that means he's like you know he's been one to three or four best players in the league this year. It wouldn't be crazy if he has a good playoff showing and like proves to be top five. People are just trying to be early on it, which I respect. I feel the same way about like Luca and Embiid. So I get Definitely. it. But it's like definitively easily top 10, pushing closer top five. I don't think it, there's, it's hard to make a hyperbole that I think is crazy. I'll say that at this point. So yeah, the, the, the hyperbole would have to be that he's the best in the world. Yeah, like then mm, it's like, shut the yeah, fuck nah. up. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah now that's different. So I was looking at my top 30 list. I had Shea at number six and I had Tatum at number eight, I think. And that was just to make a statement about the leap and the growth that he's made as the franchise player. There's like levels and there's tiers to it. And he's reached this final level of just like, okay, no, I I know I feel like you can do this. Now I just need to see it in the most important time of the game that we play. That's it. And once he once he does that, then I feel like everyone else will probably hop on the train. I think six is fair, honestly, like. Very quickly after we did our rankings, I very much want to change things. Like I already said last week that I think uh, Luca is better than Curry now. I, I changed my mind on that. And I <laughs> want to put Luca. I'd say like Luca is at, by the end of the season could be pushing for the best player in the league talks. So like I would have put Luca above Steph at four. I'm not mad at putting Shea as high as six. I think that's totally reasonable. Hmm. It's Comparing him to like a LeBron and KD are hard. You know, they're elder statesmen at this point, And like we know what they can do in the right exactly. setting in the playoffs. So it's like experience versus hot right now. I don't know. It's, it's hard to gauge, but it's not crazy at all to say Shea's better than LeBron at this point. Like, it's not ridiculous whatsoever. That's a wild exactly. statement. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not wild. It's wild to hear, but it's not a but wild not. statement. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's not a wild statement. For the, for the Thunder, though, I think one fantastic win. Like, they were... Uh, the, the score is closer than what the game actually mm-hmm. was, right? Boston made a late run to, to cut it down. I think for on the Celtics side, there's there's one thing that, that you can hang your hat on, or I guess two things that you can hang your hat on for for them going forward. Is one, Tatum played really really good defense in the fourth quarter on on Shea, and then two, Jalen Brown was four of eighteen, and you're just not gonna get four of eighteen every single night from Jalen Brown. So if you run this back in a series, I, you expect right Jalen Brown to step up and be a little bit better for the Thunder. We we keep talking about them making a trade, and I've been thinking all day. What if they just yep. don't? Exactly. What, what, right. Like, what yeah. if they just don't make a move, and everything is is fine? Like, I think we have gotten into this like like once you start seeing like a, a good young team climb, it's like okay, you got to add the, the next piece, right? Really solidify it. What if they're just them? What if they're just yeah. like <clears throat> right? They could just end up as the one seed as is and walk into the playoffs and do do whatever like. They yeah. they are that talented to do that. I've seen a lot of discourse about this. Obviously, we've also been like, if they can find a, get a lot of marketing and OG and Obi type trade, they should do it. And I've seen a lot of people today similar sentiment that like maybe they don't need to. Maybe they can just get a bench bench player with a few assets or just be who they are and be good enough to win. I've seen a lot of people be like very like pretentious about it and be like, y'all love to be trade machine fake GMs, always wanting yeah. to push for a trade. Maybe they don't need to. And like, duh, they don't need to. They're great. But I do think that it's not, that's very reductive because the whole point of saying they should make this all in move isn't because they need to if they want to be great. 
it's the fact that they have a window where they have flexibility to be able to make the all-in move exactly. and go from like exactly. good on tournament championship to like, if Larry Markin's available and they could get him, who's on a very team-friendly deal, they wouldn't be able to keep him long-term because they're going to have to pay Jalen, SGA, and Chet max money each. They're all going to be stars. So that's the argument against making an all-in move for a star is like, you know, money-wise, it's going to become tricky. But the whole point of why people like us say that you should get a Larry Markin if you can is because that's an opportunity to have like two years of like by far the best team in the league. So yeah, they don't have to make a move, but they have a unique position with young players that haven't been paid yet, with crazy assets, with small flexibility right now for the next few years before the money kicks in to be like unfuckwithable. So that's why I think it's like not as black and white. It's like they don't need to make a trade. They're already good enough. Yeah. And when it comes to this, I was more so on the side of let's see what you guys have as the season goes on and see if some like a Josh Giddy, for instance, can pick his stuff up together and he's again like we said donovan like he had a good game Mm -hmm. he he was on fire from the three-point line last night but again that's josh getting we have to realize who he is as a player and then on top of that he has other off the court stuff issues too that have been pending and so with all that being said if i am some like sam presti i see i think it'll be worthwhile for you to see the value accept what you have and Make the leap, make the move for someone like Alari Market, and if he's if that move is like still available and on the table. Yeah. Um, but honestly, some so whenever we think about OKC, everyone always raves about Shea, blah blah blah. We understand it, the picks, blah blah blah, and Chet probably he might there's a chance that this rookie can be an all star. But someone again, like you, you mentioned his name earlier, Isaac, who gets swept under the rug is Jalen Williams. J Dub, he's incredible. This random rookie from Santa Clara, uh, drafted in 2022. He is an absolute monster. He was on nobody's radars on draft day whatsoever. People were shocked that he was drafted that high. Everybody was like, "Who? Who? Who?" And they drafted two of these dudes with the same name. What's going on? <laughs> and to see him take this leap, I was uh, second year has shocked me. Before the season even started, Isaac, you said that this dude has the potential to be a star, uh, all star. And I was like, eh, I wouldn't go that far. He could probably be friends. I don't want to put too much expectations on him. But right now, he's pacing as that at that very quickly. He's improved his outside shot tremendously. <laughs> his bag has gotten deeper, of course. It's always <laughs> been there, actually. And he's just playing a different type of basketball that helps bring OKC together and whenever Shea loses the shit, loses his mind or just needs to pace himself a little bit more, J Dub is right there. No, he's fucking and insane. he's the perfect he's a perfect points, Robin four, or whatever you want to call him. Yeah, 18 points, four assists on 62% true shooting, which is about four percent higher than league average right now, like four, push, pushing five percent higher. Great numbers. I think you say his out his outside shooting has gotten better. Correct. He's shooting 40% from three, but he's also shooting 47% from mid-range last time I checked. And he's already a great rim finisher with that build he has. He's a crazy long wingspan. He's real stocky for someone his age. I don't see a world where he's not like at least as good as Jalen Brown. I got like the floor. He's going to be that level of like all-star at least. That's crazy. And I think there's a world where he can be even way better than that. Like he can push to being like top 20 player in the league one day. Maybe it'll be hard to happen with this team because there's so many, you know, there's only one ball to go around. But he has a type of untapped potential that like I think... I, I don't know about like best player on the championship team level thing because you got to be like a top 10 player to do that. But he can be like, I don't know. Well, I, I, I don't want, I don't mean, to, not, not mean to, I can't talk. We can could say in ways, I understand, what you, I understand what you're saying. In terms of just like importance to the team and what helps them go, his scoring and his rim pressure is as important to what like Kyrie did for LeBron. It's a weird way to imagine this, but in terms of just like, Having someone be able to have that own drive and do their own thing and relieve all the pressure off of you does so much. It's mo- it's it's a, yeah. it's huge for someone like Shay, and that's the type of exactly. that's the type of pressure relief. He's like Advil, Tylenol for fucking Shay <laughs> Alexander. That's what he is. Yeah, man. And when you have Shay, him, and Chet, who all have creation ability to be like one on one scorers and have an advantage against almost everybody that's guarding them, that's just a recipe for amazing offense. All right, I gotta ask y'all. We're doing all this, all this bloviating about OKC. How <laughs> how serious are we taking this this season? Right? Very. Are they are they better? Would you or would you take them in a playoff series against the Minnesota Timberwolves right now? 
I said I would this was several weeks ago, and I was you guys looked at me like I was crazy. I think yes, I think it'll be close. And let me, it's not I'm not to dismiss the Timberwolves because we've been very critical of them at points of the podcast. They're great. I think it'll be an intense series, but I think there's a non-zero chance, a very good chance that OKC would win that series and would be the case against almost any team in the league. I am still probably leaning towards the Timberwolves because I don't think it's a beautiful matchup just yet. But if they if OKC won, it wouldn't surprise me. I just think someone like Chet would have serious issues with having to do with Cat and Rudy Gobert. And then you got Nas Reed come like there are just so many big bodies all over the place. I am not. If I have Chet on my team, Cat is not putting fear into my heart. <laughs> no, no, Chet no, 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 is. More. Chet no, is no, great no. defensively already. Everyone always says like the biggest thing that could come against them is like, can they defend a Jokic? Can they defend an Embiid? Chet has not been dominated by these guys. Obviously, he can't defend them one on one. Nobody can. Like it's ridiculous standards. He'd be like, can you stop Embiid one on one? Nobody in the fucking world can. But he holds up just fine against those teams. Like they have not played the Nuggets poorly at all. All right. Well, listen. They beat the Timberwolves. What does the series against the Denver Nuggets look like Whew. to to y'all? Right? I mean, is, I, it, is it close? Is it is it close? See, is it competitive? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's very close. You can't you can't discount either of those teams whatsoever. Yeah, I'd probably still lean the Nuggets, but it's definitely close, like Mo said. Yeah, exactly. It's especially in a playoff setting. I don't want to. We I think everyone should generally lean towards the Nuggets, mm -hmm. but in a playoff setting, I'm not sure how. So, like Chet is the main X factor and determining factor to me. I already know what uh, SGA is going to give me. J Dub's game is unaffected by. Anything that you put in front of him, he's going through you regardless. It just depends on that seven foot one or seven two rookie down there and how well he can deal with Jokic. <laughs> uh, clearly, we've yeah. seen nobody can do that shit. So you're asking him to do something that no man on earth could do. So, so yeah, yeah. I'm so I'm, I'm still gonna lean locked in Nuggets in the playoff series to get to beat anybody and probably win the title again. But it, would, would I be shocked if the Thunder pushed them to seven, maybe one? Like, no, it's in the range of outcomes. I might, but you say that you're very confident in Shea and Jalen, and your biggest concern is, she, is Chet. Yeah. My biggest concern would probably be Jalen, actually. I, mm. I, I'm i not expecting him to flop or anything, but I can see a world where he has like a Jalen Brown type series last year against the Heat where he gets attacked. His handle isn't the strongest. He's a good ball handler, but like sometimes his handle is very loose and high up too, similar to Jalen Brown. I can see a world where the inexperienced thing hurts him the most and he really gets. Not exposed, but like humbled a little bit and has to like learn from that and become a more playoff proof player like Shea is. I can see that happening against the right team, whether it's the Nuggets, I don't know, depending on what type of like on ball playmakers these teams have. I can yeah. see him being affected the most in the playoff series. Yeah, for sure. Also, it's also very funny because I feel like this happens all the time with us. As we're talking and, and just praising the Thunder, they lost tonight to the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah. They, Woo! Yeah. I could do the worm <laughs> they, they right lost, now. They lost this 141, bitch. 138. <laughs> the next, listen, three out of the next four games, though, they, they're going to get right Jaylen back Johnson on. And Jalen Johnson posterized at Holmgren, too. Yeah, go yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Get it off. Get it off. <laughs> yeah, but listen, NBA like finals. <laughs> but honestly, I think everybody, I saw a bunch, I follow a bunch of Thunder fans for some reason, and I saw a bunch of them this morning were like, I can guarantee you this is a, lo a loss after last night's game against the Celtics. No chance they show up on a back to back and win again. It was a yeah. schedule loss. I think everybody expected them to lose this game. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw. I saw that this morning when, because the line came out and it was the it was Thunder minus one uh, was the was the spread and everyone was like, is this the the trap line of the of the year? Yep. Like, come on. So yeah, but it's it's very fun. Look, they have the let me let me pull up the schedule. They have the Nets, the Wizards, the Heat, and the Blazers in their next four. So they can easily hit off a quick you know four and zero thing, and by the end of next week. They might be the one seed. They, Very they, realistic. They might have that, which is which is crazy. And I know that I was saying we got to relax on Shea being top five. Guys, I think I kind of want to push the envelope with the Thunder as a whole, though, because we were talking about the Nuggets. <laughs> I'm I'm like this close. I'm like that <laughs> close to saying that that these guys are gonna make the finals. Like it's I, a tough year, man. I, I I think that That's like crazy. the shooting that they have around Shea and around and around J-Dub and like Casey Wallace is fantastic. Isaiah Joe is amazing. Like they have, they have guys at every position and if they can go and get a backup, uh, another like backup big, right? Just, just, an just another body that they can throw at, at other teams when they go, when they go big. I don't know why they couldn't make the finals. Like I, yeah. I, I'm really, really, 
fall in, in love with this team and what they're doing and like their chemistry and just how connected that everybody looks on a nightly basis. Right again, right now I'm I'm I would still pick the Nuggets. I'm this close. Yeah, man. I'm, yeah. We all talk about a star trade. Maybe they just go get a Royce O'Neal. Maybe they get Dorian Finney Smith. Any of these like role players out there that can be the missing yeah. piece. Maybe they do that and it's they look crazy because my only concern, you said they're shooting. My only concern would be Lou Dort shooting 40% for the year. Uh, Jalen Williams is shooting 40% for the year. And uh, Josh Giddy is shooting 40% since December 1st. That is a recipe for negative regression in some ways. So there's just bound to be a stretch pretty soon where the shooting isn't as elite at all points. We'll see how that looks come playoff time. But that's the one element that might not be there in like any given series. That's fair. Yeah. That, that's fair. But again, you still have... Other guys like they can go seven deep with the, yeah. with the with the amount of, of like shooting that that they are probably going to need to win a playoff series and the fact that Chet can can space the floor like all last night there was several times like Tatum is locking down Shea and Shea's just like all right I'm gonna just give it up to, to Chet for three and he's knocking him in big time shots right near <laughs> near the what's up look at this tweet that Nikhil pulled up. They have 10 players shooting 40% for three for the season. That's what I'm saying. Th okay, yeah. That's that's not gonna happen, right? Some that's, of it's gonna that's, not, that's not gonna happen in the in the playoffs. One of them is is gonna fall off. But like Bertans has been here before. Isaiah Joe, I trusted him. That's my guy. You I'm gonna <laughs> expect that that the stars are gonna, gonna do that. You don't you you don't need 10, 10 people to shoot 40%. <laughs> Ten's crazy. Ten That's wild. an outrageous number. Give me right. give me give me two or three off the off the bench, maybe just two and we can we can do something. No, they're but down. There there's they're there's cooking. some regression coming for sure. Especially these are young players. Statistically, every year in the playoffs, those are the players that regress the most in the playoffs cuz that level of defensive intensity they've never seen before. Bertans yeah. is not exactly the most consistent player in the world, also not very relevant to the rotation, so whatever. But like <laughs> this that's the only point point that could be concerning. Okay, so let's say OKC doesn't go ahead and make a move for a big swing star like Larry Markinen. What other gap or hole do you feel like needs to be fulfilled on a role player standpoint? Would you rather lean towards a big, like you alluded to earlier, Donovan, or would you want an extra guard in the mix? Nah, no, I not, think, not a guard. I, not a guard. I, yeah, yeah not, not a guard. I think what Isaac said earlier was exactly right. You go out and you get yourself like a rangy, wing right get, get yourself a dorian finney smith somebody in that in that like range who can who can be versatile on the defensive end can give you some length at the rim like that's that's re that's really what you need um so that you're not running a lot a lot of playoff minutes with the other Jalen williams at at center or or you're not too too small because when chet's not on the floor you they do kind of revert to the team that they were last year where they were still solid defensively right i think they ended the season as like the 13th defense in the league but you are small in that in that sense especially with shea j dub and giddy and door and you just have a lot of wings so some get get a get a big body to to defend the rim defend the paint and that's probably all you really need if you're not going to go get a another center. Somebody but commented yeah, on the, on the live. <laughs> Somebody commented on the live from Monday and said, are Isaac and Nikhil brothers? <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. That's bad. <laughs> it's hilarious profiling. You know, also in terms of hilarious profiling, people constantly get y'all's names mixed up in TikTok comments. Yeah, no, it is at that point. Is. It is, it is what it is. Point, Please listen, we were we were in Austin, right, shooting the live pod, and when we were checking into the hotel, the lady asked if me and Mo were were like brothers. We were like, <laughs> like we look alike. nothing alike. <laughs> Not even close. We don't uh, have we're literally just black boys with beards. That's it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great that's a good name for you guys as a duo. Black Your boys with name? beards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sounds, sounds like sounds like the title of a Jordan Lucas song. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's move on to the thing this title this podcast is episode is, whoa i just said all the wrong words in the wrong order <laughs> move on to the thing this podcast is titled after we're gonna grade every young core in the league we spent 40 minutes it. talking about these two teams let's move on to the bread and butter i think the thunder are a natural transition here because they're obviously the best young core in the league is that safe to say that is more than safe to say brad and on top it. of that 
uh, this upcoming NBA draft, bro, they have potentially two lottery picks. I forget coming from who specifically. I hate myself for that too. Um, but they have two potentially lo- hey, potential relax. lottery picks <laughs> coming in for that. Bro. It is okay. You don't know me, man. I need to know my shit. <laughs> I don't okay. know. Also, also, I I know exactly the tweet that you're talking about. They screenshotted a picture of tankathon.com. So if you go on tank- tankathon.com, you can see the draft picks right now. So right now. If everything ended up chalk with all like the the ping pong balls, the Thunder would have the 11th pick in the draft via the Utah Jazz, and they would have the 14th pick in the draft via the Houston Rockets. Nice, love it. All right, anyway, uh, so I think for young core, we should um, qu- we should tell people what that means exactly. We're counting every player, obviously relevant players, a lot of like end of the bench guys that are young. Every relevant player that's 24 years old or younger, so 25 is your age out. So Jason Tatum. This year you're no longer in a young core. Sorry to break it. He's not you. 19. What the fuck? No, he's you big 25. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, every 24 so. and under is what we're going to qualify as, and we're going to grade them just based on how talented we think they are, how they've progressed so far, how they're playing together, just in general where they stand against the rest of the young cores in the league. So I will with say, that being said, Shea Gildas Alexander is, is 25 years old. He's no longer exactly. in this young core. The Thunder have Lou Dort, who's still 24 somehow, Isaiah Crazy. Joe, Chet Holmgren, Josh Giddy, J Dub. Kaysen Wallace, Jalen Williams, and Aaron Wiggins. That's a lot of names. <laughs> that's the team. <laughs> that's, is that still that's, <laughs> that's the, that's the team yeah. minus Shea. Like. Yeah. Is that still an A-graded young core? Yeah. yeah. You could have stopped that Chet and Jalen Williams and now it would be like, <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> Just those two alone is still crazy. The fact they have one of the best young cores in the league without Shea is insane. Yeah, exactly. And they have a boatload of assets coming in too along with that. Like They're easily the number one young core in the league. Okay, so we, we, we can breeze by them. We talk about the Thunder yes. at length. Let's yes. move on to the next team. I have a whole list here. It's not in any particular order. The Charlotte Hornets. LaMelo Ball, Brandon Miller, and Mark Williams. Those are the important ones. There's some James Book Knights in there, some other random people that are, will Ooh. be there long term. Yeah. <laughs> what a disappointment James Book Knight is. But LaMelo, Brandon Miller, and Mark Williams. It's a more shallow core, but sh- profiles is a great fit and great talent long term. What are we giving them? I think I think I would give them a B. I think I think like Mark Williams is, is fantastic. Brandon Miller has been very underrated this year for his performance. But mm-hmm. and listen, Lamelo's great and he's an All Star caliber player. He just can't stay healthy, and so that's why like if he's not there and you just have the duo of Brandon Miller and Mark Williams, then it starts to get a little bit shaky. So I would a, a B probably. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't think a B is too crazy. I would say if we were, I would inch towards like oh, I want to give them a B plus because these three could very well be your core three of a franchise, and as long as they're good enough to do that, then that like warrant the three faces of your team. Then I think you might deserve a B, B plus. Uh, Tell me a B plus pushing A, but we can't give A just yet because we haven't seen Brandon Miller become. A friend he's been also, great, bro. and that's only he's because a he's year. a rookie. So yeah, yeah, he's had a great year, very underrated year. I think Brandon Miller's. I think there's a very realistic world that he becomes an all star. I don't think that's nuts. I think he could be a very clear complementary wing to Lamelo for a long time. Like I think I love that fit between those two. I don't have a strong sense for how I feel about Mark Williams yet. I think he's good. He's a great and player. I, I see the potential. He's going to be good for a long time. He if he becomes really good, like I have more confidence in Jalen Duran than I do him right now. If I had the confidence That's in Mark Williams that I do in Jalen Duran, I think this would be a tier. But the fact that it's only mm. three guys that are really a part of the core, I can see it deserving B for now. Nah, I can I can go ahead and reassure you, Mark Williams definitely deserves to be a part of the core. He is that good. Oh, for sure. I don't, I'm not saying he doesn't. Yeah, and he for sure like he solidified in my mind as his for his role in the NBA and what he will be over the next ten years. You know, he's one of he's one of those run dunk jump guys who does all that stuff <laughs> super long. He just bothers everybody's shot. Yeah, he, did, he bothers everyone's shot and all that. So I always want to almost give them an A because it's funny. I, next okay, year though, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think, top yeah, five pick again. But I don't want to. I don't. I don't think. And I guess we should decide this before we go forward. What do we like? What's the classification for A? Because if the Oklahoma City Thunder. And their young core is leading the team to potentially the one seed in, in you the know West. What? You're right. Well, they have an MVP candidate too. That's not in the young core. So that's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's not exactly just the young core. Shea makes a big difference there. If you, you name the whole team minus Shea, like, <laughs> like minus like, Shea I, is a big minus. That's that's still though. Like Chet, listen, Chet, 
J Dub and Josh Giddy alone, that that trio is fantastic. And then once you throw in literally the rest of their it's their entire rotation minus Shea. I understand. Like I'm not saying that they're like the greatest young core of all time. But if the if the A version is, yeah, two guys that are pro- like one guy who's probably going to be an all star this year in his rookie season, J Dub, who you project to be another all star and the Jalen Brown caliber player, like do the Hornets match up to that? Okay, nobody's going to. So they're not going to be the only team in A. So keep in mm. mind, they're going to be the best of A. Like there's there's some wiggle room there, though. They don't got to be as good as the Thunder. Someone else notable to add onto the Charlotte Hornets roster or young core is Nick Smith Jr. He's been getting yes. a good amount of opportunity as of late. Now, I'm not going to say he's like all-star potential or anything like that cra- crazy, but regardless of the fact still, he's his name deserves to be mentioned because yeah. he's been producing pretty well and he's been doing just what's need what he's been doing what's asked to be done as of now. So yeah, I think and with and that core alone. I think PJ Washington is still 24 as well. So he's 25. You're good. Oh, okay, never mind. This thing Nikhil pulled up is outdated. Can you pull up the ESPN yeah. roster? It's not stat muse. But yeah, uh I mean listen, Nick Smith is very young. Listen, JT Thor is under 25. Does that move you? <laughs> Hell nah. <laughs> <laughs> but they got some more young players. They got Bryce McGowan's, a lot of other young guys that are very young still that haven't had a chance to really solidify themselves. I think B's fine. I think we can move on to the next yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think B's a fair range. Next team, the Detroit Pistons. They're so tricky, bro. Complicated they're so one because they're the worst team in the league and one of the worst teams in NBA history, but they got some young talent. They don't deserve to be one of the worst teams in the league or in, or in NBA history because collectively they're ass of course but individually these players are nice <laughs> kind of i don't know i mean they can't clue not that nice <laughs> we yeah. haven't seen a lot from from their young core to make me think like oh yeah these guys are gonna be you know all star type of type of guys like everybody has flashes i just i i can't get out of my head that you lost 28 straight games like that's just you should that's, that's just wild <laughs> That's that's ridiculous. Yeah. I there's no there's no world in my opinion that we could give them anything higher than the C. I think that's the ceiling for this for this core. You just you come out and you you're literally. I doing. think you're penalizing the entire team though, and Monty Williams for like three. Who are we calling the core? Jaden Ivey, Cade Cunningham, Jalen Duran, and Cade Cunningham, uh, Jalen Duran, Asar Thompson, Jaden Ivey, yeah. Killian Hayes, Stewart, and Wiseman. They're all in twenty-five. Okay, see when you throw in Stewart, <laughs> so, so, yeah, so yeah, like the, the starting Hayes, lineup. Yeah, I'm gonna down. blame the starting lineup for being trash. Like, yeah, <laughs> listen, part of being a great young core is being able to project for being a good team together and fitting together. Why would we I, assume that? I mean, Kate, they're talented. I, we know Kate's yeah. gonna be a star. We all think Jaden Ivey can be good. I don't think it's gonna happen with his roster. We love Asar Thompson, can't shoot. We love Jalen Duren, can't shoot. All these guys just don't fit together and are better in the ideal idea of them is better because they're young players, but nothing about it is materialized. Yeah, because yeah, all exactly. of them are, but, if they get to, if they are able to get a jump shot, then they're going to be great. But there's seven guys who who we have to go down the <laughs> list and say, yeah, they can't shoot, they can't shoot, they can't shoot. Yeah. In an era of, of the NBA where you have to be able to shoot, not a lot of this translates to being a great young core. So, yeah, C has to be the highest for me. Yeah, so th- yeah there's no way it can be higher than C. We could, but it won't be shocking if next year comes around and they get some pieces that make more sense. Marcus Sasser continues to get more opportunity. He gets up higher into this, you know, the hierarchy of this young core. We see the next draft pick be a shooter. Like, it won't be shocking if this changes next year. But based off what we've seen, we can't get that much better for the doubt. I kind of want to give them a lower tier B because Ain't no way. players who, in my mind, when you think about the core, stop saying Isaiah Stewart's a part of the core. He's not a fucking a part of the core. He's, he's a not going to be a part forward. of this team for like two, three years, bro. He's a part of the team, not the core. The he's core a is someone and he has been for years. Why is he not a part of the core? They value him dearly. Hey, I prompt, I trust if they value him that much, Cade Cunningham's not going to resign that rookie extension. But he's he's going to go. <laughs> Wouldn't it be crazy? If he, I saw a tweet the other day. My mind's scattering right now, but I saw a tweet the other day that ref, that reference. What if Cade Cunningham like just didn't sign his rookie rookie extension and just like he should went cold on him? He should be hilarious. He's going to, but like it would be hilarious. Yeah, but regardless, back to the fact. Um, I don't. It doesn't feel right saying that Isaiah Stewart's a part of the core. Like that's what they're literally doing. But honestly, we know that he's 
like the weakest links. He's the weakest legs of that court. That's why it's a bad but court. But if you want to call him that, so I guess sees. <laughs> That's okay. why the court That's sucks. <laughs> listen, e- e- listen. Even if, even if you know what, we will give you that. I will give you that. I don't know about Isaiah. You can take Isaiah Stewart out of the court. <laughs> the other five guys can't shoot. They can't. <laughs> they can't shoot. Isaiah Stewart's the best shooter besides K. <laughs> Look, that's sick as hell, man. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> B- C tier core. Yeah, that's what we see. The Indiana Pacers. Tyrese Halliburton. Nice. Tyrese Halliburton, Benedict Matherin, Nemhard, Nate Smith, and Jairus Walker. This is nice. It has to I be an A it. just off the strength of Tyrese. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, you have a legit star that's in there. Yeah. And some other. Really I mean, Nemhard's a yeah. good role player for a long time, I think. Benedict Matherin's been a bit up and down, but like I know Mo has a love affair with him, so maybe you love want to affair. Give him a <laughs> no, I don't. I, I ranked him a little bit high in my summer rankings. I got a love affair with him. Nah, he's good. He's a good player, and he he will have a role uh, for a long time in the NBA. Will it be a very fruitful, fruitful one? I don't fucking know. But um, regardless of the fact, <laughs> he is a good player who can do positive things. <laughs> And with that, alongside Tyrese Halliburton and then Andrew Nemhard, like you said, is going to be in the league for a long ass time. He could start one day for a lot of different teams. This is easily a, a, a core. Look, look closely at Jairus Walker. Everybody listening this year, he's young. He's not getting a ton of burn. He's gotten some lately. He's been dominating the G League. He's been, he was yeah. a player that during the draft, everybody was like, oh, that's going to be a glove in hand fit immediately. They're giving him more time to develop because they have a lot of fours there. They signed Obi Toppin. I've been traded for him. They have Jalen Smith. They have Isaiah Jackson. They got a lot of mediocre bodies in that realm. Jairus Walker is going to be the long-term four there. He's going to be a power wing, legitimately really good player that fits perfectly with Tyrese Halliburton. I have high hopes for him going into next year. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And if people are wondering about his archetype, I would say he's a he's a rangy big wing who can stretch out the floor and he prides himself on defense tremendously. And that's just bread and butter fit alongside what this team needs and what they're yeah. trying to do. Things like Aaron Gordon with a little bit less of a handle. Like that's the, the, the best case scenario was he could be their Aaron Gordon, that type of power wing. I don't, I don't necessarily see him being that type of ball handler. Cause you know, Aaron Gordon was a one option when he was young, was kind of like forced to be a small forward. He's no longer that now, but he has a little bit of that creation chop that I'm not sure Jarris Walker will have, but everything else in his game, I think is very similar. Minus the crazy athleticism, because he's not helping <laughs> on everybody like Jack Aaron Gordon. <laughs> but I like him a lot. Yeah. Okay, I was going A for them. Yeah, yeah. Tyrese yeah, carries heavy. Shout out them. The San Antonio Spurs. Victor Wimanyama, Keldon Johnson, Jeremy Sohan, Branham, you, or Branham, I'm not sure how you say it, and Vassell. Listen, yeah, Jeremy you, Sohan you is that trying Victor to Wimby. get him. Yeah, listen, Jeremy Sohan is trying to make them a B. But, hey, he's been good but, lately. He's been good. They put him back to power forward. He's been ex- good. Exa- exactly, because they moved him to the right position. But off of, like Mo said, off of Big Vic alone, this is an A. This is an A core. As long as you have Wemby there, you have the flexibility to create a very, very dominant team, especially as he develops. Again, he's 19. He's 19. Like it's gonna, it's gonna be crazy seeing him add all these other pieces to yeah. his game. So this is easily an A core for me. So does Vic just like defy logic because he's Vic? Because yeah. you know they've been sneakily the second worst team in the league. They've been escaping by because the Pistons have all the headlines, but they're also fucking horrendous. <laughs> despite this whole young core being the core of the team that's playing a lot, they suck ass. And like you know, the Cade's been cooking. They have a star. Lamelo is a star. They didn't get A. Like, do you just have that high of hopes of Vic of being an all time player that you're like, fuck it, doesn't matter? Yeah, yeah, and that's, true. And that's fair. And that's he's, fair gonna, he's gonna be amazing. He's gonna be amazing. You, yeah, you see the things that he can do on defense. You can only name three players, maybe four players of max who can replicate some of the things that he does. And that combined with what he does on offense too. The other night we saw this man shoot a one-legged deep three-pointer. Who does that, especially at that size? Nobody. Yeah, and honestly, I think his defense is getting a little bit underrated this year because Chet's mm-hmm. getting all the praise for uh, like being in DPOY caliber talks and like Manning one of the best defenses in the league. Victor's been like just as good, if not better, than Chet defensively. He just isn't have, he's, isn't in infrastructure that would allow him to man a defense that good. So Chet's getting the the bias of like being on a great defensive team. But Wemby's already, I think, on the same level as Chet defensively. Bro, the other day, Wemby blocked somebody without even looking at it. It <laughs> was. <laughs> Yeah, backhand. He's hot on stream. A backhand <laughs> block. Like he just knows 
where where the ball is going to be and because of his wingspan he's able to he's able to just to block anything in his sight it's crazy he is a space jam player right and <laughs> so it's he's he's amazing it's a we don't we don't have to keep talking about this man yeah and you could say b for, for giving them the same holding them back for uh being fucking awful this year but them i very clearly see that once they draft the point guard in this coming draft hopefully it's isaiah collier they're gonna be s tier immediate draft uh, media of a young core like they're one position away now that sohan's back his natural position he's been eating he's been very good recently i think Kelvin johnson should be shipped to afghanistan but Damn. he's a decent player. Vassell is really good. Like the pieces are going to be there once they get that one piece to bring it together as a playmaker. Yeah, I agree. A easy, bro. You love sending people to war, man. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every two weeks I took a ship and somebody Listen, to Afghanistan. <laughs> I, I saw the statistics, the statistics of <laughs> American people signing up less and less for the U.S. military. <laughs> he said, "We're we going to enlist people. Calvin Johnson. Hell no. We need more bodies." He <laughs> said, "Send you know the most athletic people in the country to the army. We <laughs> need reinforcements." If you know anything about me, I would never say that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of uh, countries, did you know that at the beginning of the pod last week, Mo just like made up a country? No, I what didn't country? make up a country. It was not, I didn't make up a country. Up the issue stand. was not a place. <laughs> no, it was a place. The name changed. That's that's what that's what it was called. I refer oh, to okay. it as its old name. <laughs> okay, okay. I saw the comments playing yeah. you. They're saying most uh, calling Turkmenistan, Turkestan. No, nah, and yeah, that <laughs> geography is not my strong suit. So I wasn't ready to correct you, but everyone's saying it's really Turkmenistan. If yeah. I gave you a map right now, would you be able to point out that country? <laughs> Me. <laughs> Yes, you. I pointed out on a heartbeat. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I saw a random TikTok about it like two months ago, so that's why I'm deep in my bag. Don't get it fooled, bro. I'm not a deep. I'm not a <laughs> You're so deep in your bag, you dude. said the name wrong? <laughs> How deep is your bag? I did research on it. <laughs> you got an Asar Thompson bag. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next team we're going to talk about. <laughs> got this map pulled up. <laughs> no, I mean, if this is becoming a geography pod, I'm fucking cooked. <laughs> All right, the Miami Heat, a more shallow core. Tyler Hero, Jaime Jaquez, Nikola Jovic. Oh, man. Let's see. Jaquez is fantastic. Shout Great. out to him. Tyler Hero is really good. Is this a C? No. Or could we, this no, be a no, 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 no. No. It's, it's probably a, a B. Yeah. It's, it's shallow, though. Like Isaac said, it's not, it's not very deep. You got two guys. And it feels like Tyler Hero is not going to be a part of this core for much longer. He's still twenty three. He's still he's still a little pretty young. Well, I just mean that it always looks. It always feels like they're trying to trade him somewhere else. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. This is they don't have any stars, but it's interesting to me. I brought, I put them on here because like you know a lot of teams that don't have young stars I didn't put on this list because like why would we talk about them? But I think it's interesting that they have two, maybe eventually three, like good role players that are contribute. How do you grade that when it's not it's not like a high tier thing, but it's solid players that are in the rotation and it could be I very think helpful? From my perspective, I grade it based on how impactful they are to their team winning games. Uh and I think Jaime Hawkins, clear as day, like he's gonna be someone's someone's killer. He's gonna throw and ruin some fans' night in the playoffs. Uh just because of how dynamic his game has been overall or early into his NBA season. And for Tyler Hero, like we already know what he does. He's a uh, walking twenty point per game scorer, and he's shooting forty three percent. You know, you so hate Tyler like, Hero so much. I don't hate Tyler Hero. <laughs> yes, you it's, do. Just admit it. For what? Why would I hate him? Because he's white, and that's not true. That's not I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but he was very hyped up early on in his career, and he got that boost for being a uh, being a swaggy white boy whenever he was in the bubble snarling, and you hated that, and you've hated him ever since. <laughs> <laughs> he knows it's true. A legend at DC brunch is crazy. <laughs> He's averaging 23.4 points per game, 4.5 assists, 5.4 rebounds, 42% from three, 45% from the field. Tyler Hero's a fucking bucket. He's great. He's cool. Yeah, he's I've just player. seen I I I'm just a little bit jaded because I've seen the Heat make two finals runs without him. And it's like <laughs> nah, no, he was there for the first him. one. Oh yeah, they, they lost in game seven. Yeah, yeah that's when he yeah, did the snarl. 
<laughs> Ew, you made the sound. That's disgusting. Don't, don't ever do that. When he did that, I thought my toe was flushing by itself. I was like, what the that was fuck? Nasty. <laughs> no, Tyler Hero's dope. I, th- I think maybe C's, are, maybe C's fair because like we have teams in A and B that like have legit superstars coming into the fold eventually. LaMelo Ball and Brandon Miller are B tier. So maybe this has to be C. That's why I feel comfortable with C for sure. Okay. Next thing we got. Pull my dock back out. I don't know why I closed my phone. Next team is the Orlando Magic. Another great one. Oh, this is an A. A T. Easy A. Orlando Magic. Orlando Magic. (laughs) Bro, that song is catchy. Oh, it's so good. (laughs) My question to you guys and to I want to if you're still here, comment the answer to this. Who has the better young core when you take Shea Gildas Alexander out the fold because he's 25? The Thunder or the Magic? Who's the best young core in the league? Because you got Chet on the other side, you got J dub. Two probably super not superstars, two all stars eventually probably. But you got Paolo, you got Franz Wagner, you got Anthony Black, Jed Howard, two rookies that we'll see where they become. Jalen Suggs, Cole Anthony, like this is a deep core too. Yeah, I would definitely lean towards the Orlando Mag- the Orlando Magic because really? Paolo is yeah for sure. They have too many bodies. They have too many good bodies. Paolo and uh, Franz, <laughs> relax, bro. <laughs> I can't talk about nothing. That's wild. That's crazy. I can't have no conversations, but regardless of the fact, Paolo and Franz, for the I don't want to stay here. I don't want to say they're <laughs> just as good as J-Dub because they're on different trajectories. So you know you have to multiply times set, three. But <laughs> <laughs> you are wild. <laughs> <laughs> Who's better, Don't want to answer this question. Chet Holmgren is the best player of these two teams. Who's better, J-Dub or Paolo? Probably Paolo. J Dub or Paolo, it's Paolo, Paolo for sure. Yeah. Man, Paolo's inefficient as fuck. <laughs> Paolo is a 50% effective field goal percentage. That's 13th percentile. I <laughs> understand that. But he like Chucker. I listen, let's give J Dub his own team and have him, you know, run the, be the focal with point. No, yeah, be the focal point with no spacing around him. It's a lot different. We'll, we'll yeah. see what, we'll see what <laughs> I think J Dub might cook. I'm not gonna lie. I think he I think he'd cook in that situation. <laughs> With no space, with, with the Orlando that's Magic space, that's easy shooting? to say. Yeah. Well, he brings spacing. He needs it. Like he's, he's the spacing, so like it wouldn't be as big of a deal. <laughs> but I, I feel you. It is. It's a very different team construction. It's easier for J Dub has a lot less attention pointed at him. So I understand that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so yeah, I would I would take Paolo. After that, though, if you want to take Chet and J Dub over Franz, I th- I don't think that that would be crazy to oh, say. Oh, easily, I, easily. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So I for sure. And I'm picking Chet and, over Paolo. Is that fair? Um, that's, yes. um, see, I'm very I, I, up and think, down. There's no come on because that's not an easy answer whatsoever. You're tripping. You I, think it's that easy, that's no, no, I don't, I don't think it's, it's I don't think it's easy. Down. If we are projecting though, if we are projecting to like what they are going to be in their careers, I think taking Chet over Paolo is a hundred percent fair. The defense, I is, all, the de- the defense sure. is already skewed heavily in one direction. We've seen what, what Chet So is the offense. We do not do not think that Chet is going to be able to develop offensively enough to where his literally DP, DPOY level defense is going to be able to to offset that. Oh no, you don't understand me. You don't understand me. I'm saying I'm picking Chet easily. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. Chet's better on both ends easily. Okay. Like, okay. 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 Easily. I I I like Palo a lot. I think Chet is the clear okay, answer. We're here. Like <laughs> we're here. Yeah. 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 Chet's like <laughs> incredibly efficient big man who can handle the ball, run in transition, stretch the floor, pass a little bit, DPOY caliber defender. Palo's gonna be great. He's gonna be a big that can also handle the ball. Eventually, will become more efficient as a scorer. Maybe. Probably. Never gonna be that level of defender. The passing is gonna be a wash. Chet's always gonna be it's more efficient. It's not a wash. Um, but I agree with you. Um. I would say that it's so much easier to envision someone like Chet Holmgren fulfilling his potential because he's asked, he's probably, he's being asked to be one of the five best big men in the entire NBA in the future, along with playing that level of defense. And that's, that could be a thing. And for Paulo, if you see him and you're, you're setting these expectations for him, you're asking him to be one of the 10 best players in the NBA. If he's not that, then the whole Paulo experiment is a wash. 10, 15, <laughs> it's a wash. Bro, Chet shoots fifty two percent from mid range and forty two percent from three right now. <laughs> this man is going to be one of the he's one of the best spacing big men we've seen in the modern NBA already. OD three ball, that's crazy. He needs yeah. to be an all star. 
He needs to be an all-star. 42% from Trey Ball is OD off hang clothes. <laughs> <laughs> but is he speaking? Maybe we got to ding him for having the Tyler Hero trait of looking in the mirror and seeing a light-skinned man. So maybe maybe I got to hold him back for that. He is, he is real lame. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, we're, we're straying too far from the point. The Magic are also yeah. A-tier young core. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I agree. Franz is nasty, bro. Franz is nasty. Franz is Suggs great. is nasty. Disgusting. Cole Anthony is disgusting. Gogo Badate. I can't believe I just said that before. Randall Carter Jr. and other players. <laughs> but, bro, we understand the point. <laughs> They're great, man. All right, next team, the Washington Wizards. Bilal Koulibaly, <laughs> Johnny Davis, Corey Kispert, and Jordan Poole. <laughs> This team is Bro. trash. This is actually hey. this might be the worst young core. No, in the no, Koulibaly is gonna be nice. I can Who speak for him. Cares? They, suck too. they <laughs> suck too. You <laughs> named a young core with Johnny Davis in it. You get an F. This young okay. core is trash. I did that as a joke. He doesn't play. He's horrible. <laughs> I did that as a joke. But Koulibaly and Jordan Poole and then Corey Kisper, whatever he you think he is. Denny, oh, and Denny Abdiha. I forgot about him. He nice. <laughs> is that nah. is that D, D tier? That's e. F. It's a mean <laughs> F. That's a mean F. Koulibaly is nice. We love his game. Denny Avdia, he's a good player. You can see him being a viable player in the NBA for a while. But other than that, they're in the blend. They're in the blender. How old is Jordan Poole? Twenty-four. <sighs> man, <laughs> still <laughs> they're in the blender right now. They're in hell. Yeah, man. Koulibaly is <laughs> the only one there that I'm. Is, I'm confident is going to be there once they're a good team. Exactly. In seven I years. <laughs> this team is not good. Year one of a rebuild is tough. Yeah, we okay. We can throw them in F tier. Sorry, Wizards. Yeah. If you're a Wizard fan, you listen to this podcast. You have not had a single good day of enjoying listening to us in the past year. Today's not the day that'll change. <laughs> Man, I'll change two years from now. <laughs> <laughs> the Toronto Raptors. Scotty Barnes, RJ Barrett, Grady Dick, Christian Coloco, Emmanuel Quickly, and Gary Trent. Kinda Emmanuel cooking. Quickly changes this a lot. Kind of the, cooking. I will see. We, we we like quickly a lot. If you guys didn't listen to the live stream we did yesterday, go on YouTube and watch that because we broke down the whole trade. Donovan went crazy talking about the Knicks. We did the whole trade reaction there. If you go there, we were all pretty happy about the trade for the Raptors. We all like Emmanuel quickly a lot. Could see him making a big leap next to Scotty Barnes. But that's also projecting that we see a leap coming. Hasn't came yet. So it's really just Scotty Barnes being great and then a lot of iffy pieces plus quickly who's already good, not great. Where does that stand? Is Scotty Barnes' greatness great enough to put them in A? No. Mm. No. I mean, I mean they have RJ, Grady Dick hasn't done shit. They thought Grady Dick was... They drafted him to be an immediate contributor a as a shooter because they were trying to compete. He is raw and needs time. He could be good. I'm not going to write him off, but he is not good at the moment. So, RJ Barrett is RJ Barrett. Uh, you know how I feel. I, it can't be A, I don't think. One, there's two good players there. One's a star in the making. One's Emmanuel quickly. Yeah, I think depending on the synergy between Scotty Barnes and Emmanuel quickly, this could potentially turn into an A. But for now, I think we can agree that this is probably comfortably a B, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I, I would I would say B. I think like it, it's funny. I I was like, oh yeah, we, you know we haven't seen, bro. Your phone. I'm sorry. <laughs> your phone just. I know people don't know what that Ridiculous. is. If you guys hear the beeping, my my uh, it doesn't matter. Keep going. What were you saying? Yeah, it doesn't. A anyways, it, it was funny because you're talking about like, oh, we haven't seen the the leap from a menu quickly. It's been one game. Like like it's it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna come. It's gonna happen. Not what I meant. Not what I meant. But yeah. yeah, yeah. He's he's gonna he's gonna be fantastic. I think. Yeah. Wait. So we're gonna settle at B for this. Yeah. For, I, I yeah. meant this far in his career for menu quickly, not the one game with the Raptors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah, he's okay. fine. Are you cool with that? Yeah, I think. Yeah, because I, I think I think Scotty Barnes has elevated himself. Like in terms of where Lamelo Ball's place is in the league, like Scotty Barnes is is very comfortable. He's you know projecting to make an All Star team this year. This is this is fine. It's okay. It's not bad. How do you guys feel about RJ Barrett? He's still only twenty three. Like, how does he contribute to this young core? Like, let me let me rephrase the question. I know you guys have varying degrees of disgust with RJ Barrett on the Knicks. Do you see him being able... Is there a world where he becomes a good, good player with this young core? And if there's a range of outcomes between Nick's worst-case scenario, RJ Barrett, and like a really good player you could hope he could be, where do you see him going in that realm? Is he like towards the better-case scenario or worst-case? He's significantly in the middle of that 
<laughs> I was about to say the same <laughs> thing. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> combine those two worlds together, and that's exactly the outcome yeah, that you exactly. get. Just RJ Barrett. <laughs> yeah, that's you think he's gonna R- stay that way? You think he's gonna be average for the direct duration of his time with the team? Yeah, that's the RJ Barrett experience. It's a wildly inconsistent ride, and okay. there's gonna there's gonna be time. Like RJ Barrett, he's only twenty three. He's been in the league for four or five years now. Like we're starting. That's what I'm to, saying. He has time. What do you mean he has stopped five years? Like <laughs> <laughs> he's he's had time. Drug, I agree, but twenty three is still very young. We've seen players be up and down, and then you know, again, we we're very jaded by a lot of young stars these days, just like immediately developing. For a role player such as him, who's he's firmly in that realm now. Like yes. nobody has any expectations of him being a star. Some role players take time. Like Dante Exum left the league for several years. He came back. He's better. Larry Markin became a star at like twenty four. Like. It's not always very linear in that way, especially for someone like RJ Barrett, who's been a tertiary player. You can see him developing into a decent role player around 25 or so. I can I can uh. understand that. But even with Lowry, Lowry always had the ability to like, like you felt kind of comfortable with him shooting the basketball. If RJ is not, or if RJ is shooting the basketball, <laughs> I don't think you can actually rely on that for you. I'm looking at his cleaning the glass page Nikhil could you pull up RJ Barrett's cleaning the ga- glass page and go to shooting yeah. accuracy yeah <laughs> I'm cleaning the glass they have your shooting percentages for each spot on the court and then the percentile and where you mm-hmm. rank amongst your position the worse it is it's arranged from blue to orange being the better ones like hot to cold this dude's chart is all blue in every position from every year of his court of his career, <laughs> except for the one year he shot forty percent from three. <laughs> exactly. This He's is never not, been efficient from any spot on the court. This this is not this is not a guy that you're going to rely on for for shooting. Like all the other stuff, you hope can can come, but it's it's going to be on a night to night basis, up and down. I don't think that he's going to be a legitimate part of this young court. They're going to build this team around Scotty and, and IQ. And yeah. for the rest of Barrett's contract, they're going to enjoy having a Canadian <laughs> in, in Canada. But it's <laughs> exactly. Not gonna, it's Nikhil, not click be offensive overview. Click and offensive overview and then click shooting accuracy. While everyone's looking at this, listen up. The Toronto <laughs> Raptors are one Zoom of in, the please. four <laughs> worst shooting teams in the NBA. You oh bring God. RJ Barrett on that team, <laughs> who's already who's already one of the most bleh, three-point shooters ever. You get you're cooking absolutely nothing. So he had his life super easy on the next while while watching someone like Jalen Brunson and Art and Julius Randle and the offensive options that they have there. All they have there is Scotty Barnes, who's great, and also Pascal Siakam, who is great in his own right. But the the looks that we're hoping that he'll get or that he will get will not be any easier at all. <laughs> so yeah, and the only thing the disaster. only thing on this chart that you can hang your hat on is the 51st percentile for the corner three. And the only reason why it's not blue is I think, wait, can we see how many attempts? Nikhil, can you hover over the 38% on, on this year? 52 he's taking, attempts. <laughs> yeah. He's taking 52 <laughs> shots from, from the corner three. Like that's just not, <laughs> you know, viable volume. And so this is, so that, it's not going to be great for the Raptors, but it's okay. Could you have, you have a, a dynamic point guard who you hope is going to grow and blossom and be able to to have a great two man game with Scotty Barnes. Like it's going to be okay. And once they get Pascal, we're going to see what else they add to this young core. They yeah. are they're moving in the right direction, but right now this is a B. Okay, I agree. Next team, the Portland Trailblazers. They currently have a young core of Scoot Henderson, Shaden Sharp, Tumani Kamara, Anthony Simons, and Jabari Walker. I love this young core. Tumani Kamara, when I read his name, when he got traded, I'm like, too many cameras. What the fuck are you talking about? Man? <laughs> I heard Kenny say that. Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's good. That's good. Having, <laughs> I, I, th- I think the, the group of them, will, like the core is fantastic as individuals. I'm not sure how they'll pan out in the, in a few years because three of their best players right now, quote unquote, uh, play the same position. And but regardless of the facts, like they are still in my mind, I damn near want to put them a because Anthony Simons is oh, no. an absolute flamethrower from hell. Uh, Shane sure. Sharp has been pretty consistent over the last or the entire season. Nah, and play. Sc- Scoot Henderson has you need to gone relax. together over the last five games. <laughs> now nah, play you, eight. They have a lot of bodies. Eight here. You need to relax. The fuck out. <laughs> Listen, you think so? if you, 
If you think Scoot is going to be like the superstar that we hoped he could be when we got drafted number uh, number three overall and we were like, he should be number two. If you believe he's going to be the best version of that and like be like better than LaMelo Ball type shit, I understand why you'd say that. I think it's way too early to assume he will be. And while I think Anthony Simons is great making a big leap, that's he's, he's, he's not like on that level, I don't think. I don't know if he has a ceiling that like LaMelo Ball has, do you? No, nah, I wouldn't say he's a he's a tier below Lamella Ball. Yeah, or at least he should be. He will be and Shaden also again very could be very good, but this is a team that has high potential but hasn't quite put it together yet, which I think is more similar to what we saw from like the Pistons in terms of ranking their young cores. Yeah, yeah. Except they're a lot better than them. <laughs> <laughs> no, not so, a lot. They're not a lot better than anybody. They're they they're a lot better than they're not in the Pistons territory. <laughs> no, they already not. won like what. Yeah, they're a lot better than the business for sure. But um, yeah. I think you can talk me into you can talk me into B at the worst case scenario because we've seen this group of players be productive together, even though they do not fit together necessarily what do you mean by that? at all. What do you, what do you when mean I say that, together? I mean, huh? What do you mean? What do you mean productive together? Like, what have they done that are you basing that off of? Like wins or like their individual <laughs> production being better than the last week and a half? Uh, in terms of like finding an identity over the course of the season and the if you watch the Portland Trailblazers which I don't expect a lot of people to mm-hmm. but something that Mon- not Monty Williams but Chauncey Billups has emphasized is their defense their defense is not absolutely atrocious that's something that they hang their hat on as a team yeah. and so it feels like all of them have committed to uh what's that fuck I don't know why my, my brain is failing me right now <laughs> but they apply a lot of pressure in the backcourt every single time the guards bring the ball up press full court and press Full core press. There we go. There we go. They run. The, they run the most. Some of the most full core press in the entire NBA. And to see those guards just commit to that end and help. I feel like that helps signify what they potentially could do in the long term. In the long term, and also the offensive production that I just see these guys consistently giving off over the last few, not the last few games, but this entire season. I'm feeling real comfortable with. I think they're probably a C, but I can rock with them being a B just off of like if we really like these young guys and see them making big leaps. I'm cool with that. If we still if we, if you guys still really have a ton of scoot stock and are like fully believing in him, I'm cool with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I do have had some some scoot stock and but I mean and Mo's not completely wrong. Like they are being kind of productive as a as a team. Like right now they're projected to have the fifth overall pick. You know what I'm saying? Like they're losing games, get, getting those draft picks up. That's exactly what you want from a rebuilding <laughs> team. So. Successfully shout- asked, let's go. Yeah, they exactly. are, they are, they're are. they completing the mission. So shout out to Portland, you know? Listen, if but they're not completing the mission, then the Pistons yeah. are completing the fuck out of the mission. They must be eight tier. <laughs> yeah, but the goal is to complete the mission without shame though. And what the Pistons have been doing- That's true. That's has true. been d- Has been disgusting. At least give your team, give your fans some type of hope. You know what I'm saying? And the Pistons haven't been able to do that whatsoever. Right now, although it's not good, it's not fucking Pistons status. They're 8 and 21. The, you said they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're 9. They've, they've won 9 games. They're, they're and nine also, and they're 18th in defense. Okay. That's what I'm talking about right there. Give they're us something to look forward to. They're respectful to. ass. They're yeah. ass that you can bring in the run public. Exactly. <laughs> you can bring it bro, home. <laughs> bro, the Pistons started off the year 2-1. and one. They're 3-30 and 30 now. <laughs> like, that's just, it's just a different level of yeah. Yeah. trash. I get it. I get it. Okay, so we can give them a B. 3-30 and 30 is crazy. I can't believe, I, I can't believe we've lived through this. To, through, <laughs> see, through seeing the worst team ever. I love it. The Utah Jazz. Oche Ajabi, or I, I think I feel like I butchered that. Keontae George, Taylor Hendricks, and Walker Kessler. Taylor Hendricks is another player similar to Jairus Walker, who a lot of people project to be a very productive four going into the future. As a rookie, isn't getting the most opportunity, but it'll come in time. Keontae George is a very, I think a lot of people have a lot of faith in Promising. him becoming a good player there. And Walker Kessler is obviously really good. Having a slow start to the year, but last year he was like a great, great defender. See? Yeah, ah. there's, there's a lot like, there's a... There's a lot of potential here where like yeah. I think I feel like for some of the other courts we've we've been able to see mm. a little bit more um like actual productivity from them on the floor and right now. Like like Isaac said, it's still very young. Keontae George is 20. Taylor Hendricks is 20, right? All these guys are super, super young, and we just haven't had the amount of time to see them play as many games as some of the other cores that we've talked about. So I would give them I'll give them a C, but by the end of the year, they could be B if we see some more flashes from a lot of these guys. 
Yeah, I think they're, just, I they're, they're waiting to yeah. get their top tier guy if and when that happens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think being labeling them as B is probably being too nice because we're not 110% sure who that guy is just yet for them. And I think the truth of the matter is that they just haven't came across that guy like Isaac alluded to earlier. So as of now, like C is very comfortable. I did honestly like forget that Walker Kessler just existed point blank period <laughs> because I've somehow avoided induct and dodge every single Utah Jazz game possible. Thank God for that. I hope I keep doing that in 2024. But um, <laughs> they probably do deserve a C. Yeah, I think it'll be good. Again, he had, he had a very slow start to the year. I think he's been better as time. It's been a little bit up and down, even though he's gotten better than worse again. It's been a weird year for him. But it's also because they have no point guards this year. You know, after they traded exactly. by Conley last year, they fell off a fucking cliff and they just literally have no point guard. That's why they suck again. Even though over the past like, week, they've been winning games inexplicably. So we'll, we'll see what their outlook's going to be going forward. But yeah, they, they don't have a top four pick on this team. I think we're just waiting for if they ever get to that point and have a high pick and can get the blue chip guy. But they're building a good core around that. So when they do get that guy, it'll be very, very interesting. Yeah, I agree. It's crazy that THT is only 23. That's yeah, he's in the core. <laughs> That's why he's, he's, he's their highest paid player besides Lowry and Colin Sexton. <laughs> what? Who paid him that money? Uh, the Lakers, I think. <laughs> what? Oh my god! It's gross. Not that much. Oh, but yeah, okay. Eleven year. Okay. <laughs> Next team, the Golden State Warriors: Tracy Jackson Davis, John the Kaminga, Moses Moody, Pajemski. Ass. <laughs> no, Trace is actually fantastic. If it, if if it wasn't for these last three weeks, we would have labeled this team as like a straight up F when it comes to their young core. <laughs> but as of late, I think they're a solid, respectable B or my bad C because none of those guys are those guys. No potential all stars. I'm going to say that at least. But Trace Jackson Jr. has revived this team as a whole and he's carrying a lot, in my opinion. Yeah. And then it's another thing like Moses Moody. We all want him to get minutes. Steve Kerr glues his ass to the bench. John Thickmingo has been looked solid lately since since Draymond Green's been out. I've been happier with what I've seen from him. I'm not sure if the numbers bear it out, but watching them, I've liked that. And obviously we think Brandon's like, he's good. Like he's, he's clearly proving to have like a role, whether that's a flash in the pan, because we've seen that happen with Warriors guards over the years. We'll see. Remember, uh, Remember McKinney, <laughs> whatever the height of oh, that, yeah. where we thought like, oh, they got another one. <laughs> so we'll see how oh that goodness. plays out with him. He's probably a little better than that. Yeah, yeah, this this core could be, it could be a B tier, but hey, Steve, it could, Kerr, it, it, nah. it could, but Steve Kerr yeah. clearly thinks it's a D tier. That's why he doesn't play half <laughs> half of the guys. So I, I don't know, like I, if if I, Moody and Kaminga, especially leading up to this point, actually got minutes and were able to develop in games and spots where Golden State actually could have used their skill set, they probably could have been further along. I do think that that there is another ceiling for both of them. And I mean, at least for, for Brandon, like he's he's come in and he's been a very, very valuable piece to what you know they've been doing lately. So I I would go see. I just, I still believe in a lot of these guys. I get it. I think they might realistically deserve D based on what they've done. <laughs> How can you put them higher than like a C when you guys like Clay Thompson? I'm not putting them openly than admitting. C. Oh, but you guys got you guys. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. But I don't envision a world where they can be anywhere up a B. Hell, hell no. It's even above a B when you guys got when you got guys like Clay Thompson openly admitting that he probably could be a better mentor to younger guys and he's had a lot of negative energy and you just have like a do ramps anything. in the corner, bro. That has to do with player development. That that has something to do with it. Because Clay Thompson's been whiny. We're like, fuck it, they can't be a C. Clay Thompson's <laughs> exactly. a bad vibe exactly. next to him. <laughs> <laughs> he he held him back. He held him back. Speaking of Clay Thompson, you guys see his interview where he was basically said him and Steve Kerr talked about it and he realized he's washed. That's a yeah. way to say it, but he basically was like, I had to look in the mirror and realize where I'm at in my career. Oh, yeah. In this like final stage of my career type. Yeah. Good for him that they've had that, yeah. that kind of like point of clarity. He was talking about how he clearly was a negative influence in the locker room whenever he gets yep. down on himself. Good for him making those realizations. <laughs> I mean, we'll <laughs> see what it leads to, the... right? People yeah. can come out to, to press conferences, say whatever you want. Uh, True. Let's see how it translates to the floor. Yeah. This is a D tier core. I'm not, I'm not going to dance around it. Okay. The Dallas Mavericks, Josh Green, <laughs> Lively, Jaden Hardy, Maxence Prosper, and Luka Doncic. Still 24. 
damn, Luca's still 24. All right, all if right, it well, wasn't, well, this is the a, wildest swing ever. A, they might have the best player in the league in their young core. Yeah, with Luca, A. Without Luca, D. <laughs> without Luca, this bitch is an F. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> this would be worse than ass if this was a. You know, How is he so young? I imagine he turns 25 later this year. Well, Which obviously, is, he does yeah. in 2024. I don't know if it's this season or if it's like during the summer. I'm not sure if his birthday is. Still 24, though. Crazy. His <laughs> his birthday is February 28th. Oh, yeah. so he's 24 soon. I'm 25 soon. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's, but as of now. He's a day older than me. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. <laughs> Am I still young? Like, <laughs> you're still <laughs> young. Does, does, does that count? Let's go. I'm dead. I forget I, I, he does in our class. I needed that. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> uh, Obviously, A tier. They got Luka Doncic. There's nothing to talk yeah. about. I'm mostly joking, yeah. including them. Yeah, Next exactly. up, keep it in Texas. The Houston Rockets. Sengun, Green, Tari Eason, Jabari Smith, Amen Thompson, Cam Whitmore. This is an A. Another top tier one. This is a really good deep young core. Yeah. Last year, they were a B core. And this year, with Sengun elevating a couple lev- levels and then. Uh, then bringing in Amen Thompson and Cam Whitmore, who's been making humongous waves. And he made waves in the Summer League and the G League. And now he's starting to get more and more playing time as the season has gone on. Gone on. This could be a roaring A soon. But now it's I, only, roaring I a roaring A? I wish Jalen Green was good. Yeah. No, no signs of pointing to him becoming a good player. You look at his shot chart. It's very similar. He's on RJ Barrett time. A lot of blue on that shot chart. I wish he would become That's a good player because that would really set them above the line. But even without him, Amen Thompson's going to be good. You know, he got hurt earlier in the year. It's been a slow start. Not not unexpected. He's playing behind Fred Van Vliet. It's not going to be a big rookie season from him. But we all think he's going to be great. Sangoon's a legit star. Tari Eason's one of the most underrated players in the league from a young player. Jabari Smith's learning how to be good at basketball this year. He's been a legitimately good contributing player to a sort of winning team. I agree with A, I think. You don't, right. you don't think yeah. he's cool, Donovan? Mm-hmm. No, I think we can go with A. I, it's for a lot of these young teams. It's just very funny because you look at like the young core, and it's half the team, right? <laughs> and like, but like like y'all said, Sengun's his leap that he's taken this year has been amazing. Real. And so yeah. and so like for all for all the other guys, like for for the teams like the Thunder and the Magic, like those are easy A's. I think that they would be. If we were breaking it down, the, the Rockets would be an A minus, but they are still, yeah, yeah, I agree. But but they are still in that tier though. Yeah, yeah, for they're, sure. they're here for volume, not necessarily the high end talent. Yeah, they don't got uh, I don't even know if they have a J Dub. They definitely don't have a Chet. They who else we put in A? No, they're they're probably pretty similar to the Magic. Maybe Paolo is gonna be better than Sengun. I think that's fair. But the Magic <coughs> up there for like volume of good players. Maybe not a true superstar superstar. Depending on if Paolo makes a big leap in the coming years, which he could. He can probably do that more than Sangoon can, but they're up here because they just they're gonna have a lot of good players. Facts. Yeah. Yeah, they have the volume. They have the space. All right, That's next funny. up, the Memphis Grizzlies. A. John Moran is still twenty four. Jaron Jackson's still twenty four. Zyra Williams, Vince Williams Jr., <laughs> and a bunch of white power forwards that we don't care about. In Salty Alabama, Jake <laughs> it, and Ray it, You don't care. Oh, this man, is an, I was about to say don't it's an easy salty. It's an easy yeah. Yeah, man, they got two all-stars. Like, it's hilarious that John Morant is still 24, Jaron Jackson still 24. They yeah. got a DPOY and a top 15 player. It's not even a real <laughs> conversation, bro. This it's is not. <laughs> Let's move on. Honestly, we were talking about the Thunder being the best. This is the best young core in the league, obviously, because <laughs> Shay aged up. Huh. Who would you rather have on your team? J- oh, well, yeah, because Shay aged up. They have John Morant. Right, you're, right, you're right. You're right. You're right. I forget. Shay, I forget. Shay is 25. Damn. Yeah, yeah. The Pelicans, the last one we got here, because every other team doesn't really have a young core anymore. The Pelicans have Zion Williamson, Trey Murphy, Kira Lewis, Jordan Hawkins, and Dyson Daniels. Listen, this is it's a good young core on on paper. I think they the I mean, even in like actual basketball, like they're they're good. No, it's great. It's an A. It's an A. We don't we don't gotta we know Zion's been disappointing. It's an A. It's an A young core. Eh. Come on. Zion and Trey Murphy project to be very, very good young players in the NBA. Jordan Hawkins, although he's he just came back, or no, Trey Murphy just came back and he's seen Jordan Hawkins has not gotten any minutes. He's in the G League currently, which is an absolute disgrace. Um, Why is he it deserves disgrace? because he was absolutely <laughs> hooping his ass off while Trey Murphy was out. Now the efficiency yeah. wasn't there. He's a fucking rookie. He's asked to take eight 
nine threes a game. But regardless of the fact, like he needs to he needs to be be getting minutes, and he he's the exact type of player that the Pelicans needs to be playing a lot more in order to see someone like Zion Williamson fulfill his potential because of the obvious spacing reasons. That's okay. why it's an atrocity. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, either way, I think you got Zion, you got Trey Murphy, who's going to be a high-end role player, could maybe get a little better in that long term. We'll see what his opportunity is like in his career. I think it's an A. If you want to be like, oh, Zion Williamson's out of shape, he's ass, I'm not giving the respect, at worst it's B. But listen, they got Zion Williamson. <laughs> That's me. Yeah, okay, well, be fucking for real. We saw <laughs> They have a guy who at one point was a top 10 player in the league, so Zion Williamson deserves to be an A. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for six, for sixteen games he was hooping. That was that was crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> uh, is it crazy? Zion still might be an all star this year. He's not, he's just though. that good. He's he just not going to be an all star. <laughs> he could though. Like it's not it's not going to be impossible. He's going to get fan votes. He's, he's not to going to be an all. He's not going to be an all star starter. And I don't oh, for sure for sure not. Exactly, and he's not going to make the the reserve. He's not going to be an all star. We've been through just, this. Se- we've been through this several zero. times. And every time we every time we go through it, I ask you about the names that like that he would be better than that he would have to knock off, and he doesn't make the cut. It's not gonna I happen. I agree, but why, why are you at we know there's gonna be a lot of injury reserves. There always is. There's gonna be two or three people picked afterwards, and he's gonna be in the mix. Nah, bro. He, he's not making it. I'm not saying he's going to, but I'm just saying like there's is a non-zero chance. Like be prepared. It's gonna be hilarious. Like <laughs> I mean, don't mathematically, be surprised. okay. Mathematically, yeah, there's a non-zero chance, but like I mean, I mean, obviously not. There's a, at least a one percent <laughs> chance, sure, but like, there's a decent chance he's going to be an all star, depending on what they're where they're at in the standings. Because right now they're fifth, and if they continue to be in that place, they're only one win behind the uh, Clippers. If they're, if they're the four seeds, Zion Williams is going to be an all star. Yeah, someone needs to be an all star for that team. You told me you're picking Brandon Ingram over him. Yuck, man! You said it like where Brandon Ingram is EJ Liddell. <laughs> <laughs> where are your morals at? <laughs> Are you a man of God or what? He's not. He's not, <laughs> he's not making. The, he's not making the All Star. <laughs> All right. Anyways, that's the end of the young cores. We flew through them. I didn't write them down, so I can't recap them for you guys. But I hope you <laughs> listen to the whole thing. Now it's time to transition. TikTok time. Let's do it, eaters. Crayon eaters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, eaters is crazy. <laughs> There's one important word that you leave out, and it makes it a very different sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move to TikTok time. <laughs> As always, we're going to start with the draft. This time we're going to mix it up. We're not drafting lineups. We're not building a player. We're just drafting five players that we think have been the most surprising players in the NBA this year. Surprising can be whatever you want. It could be good, could be bad. It just has to shock you based on what you thought preseason. Let's do it. God damn. I'm ready, bro. I got a long ass list. Okay, this man's passionate. I'm right, I'm right. <laughs> draft order is me, Mo, Donovan. I'm mad I'm wasting my first pick on a draft that's not competitive, but here we go. <laughs> Let's draft the most surprising players in the league. Y'all know how it works. First Let's pick, I'm going Jordan Poole. I thought he'd be good. I thought he'd repair his reputation a little bit. He's made it 10 times worse. I'm not going to lie. I told you this is going to happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I told you he was not like that. Yeah, this man craves the structure of Golden State, and he's been nothing but trash since leaving. Yeah, and with the number two overall pick, I have to choose the man who ruined the entire infrastructure, who broke it, Draymond Green. And not <laughs> only that, he broke Jordan Poole's face, too, so I got to pick him number two. You're surprised <laughs> by Draymond? This, this is what he's yeah, with how Yeah, with how insane that he's been hurting people at this rate. We haven't seen it before. He's the, ruining the OG his team. Puncher? This is, we've seen this for, for a decade. <laughs> Listen, two, assault, <laughs> two assaults in two weeks is kind of crazy. Okay, fine. Yeah. yeah. Over the last the double, five the double, months, double hitting someone in the chest, <laughs> slapping in the face, and also going for someone's neck. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right. With my first pick, I have to go with Dylan Brooks. I okay. was mm. clowning Dylan Brooks in the offseason. Even good. I, I said that he was the worst contract in the NBA. And he's been he's been cool, right? He's been chilling. So he play, played his role. Shout out, right? Shout out, <laughs> shout, we love that. shout out to the guy. All right. So <laughs> so Dylan Brooks is my first pick. My second pick, my second pick is Scotty Barnes. That's right? what I was gonna pick next. That's a great pick. We, I'm taking Scotty Let's Barnes. We've all talked about it. We thought that he was on Tyreek Evans, Michael Carter Williams time, right? That he had a Mickey Mouse <laughs> rookie of the year. That's not the case. He's actually playing. Y'all thought that. He's actually playing very, very well. And he is about to be an all-star. He is my second pick. Yep. Became an elite shooter wow. overnight. 
Yeah, we love that shit, bro. Uh, on the positive side, on the positive side of things, I gotta go. I gotta roll with Brandon Miller. If he okay. would have been ass to start off the season, everybody would have been on been on his case. But now that he's good, it's been fucking crickets. He's a legitimate piece of the brand, of the Charlotte Hornets future, and he's been everything that they knew that he was going to be. Everyone was quiet about it though. Yeah, the, the the school comparison is aging well for Brandon Miller. Exactly. Next pick, I'm going to stay on the positive note. Give me Tyrese Maxey. He made a legit mm, star leap. There we go. And I thought he'd be better. I didn't think he'd be on averaging 26 on elite efficiency looking like a young Damian Lillard. Damn. And then Young Damian Lillard is crazy. <laughs> he's been great, bro. Yeah. And after that, back to negativity. Give me Zion Williamson. I thought <laughs> we were past his out of shape shit. Last year, he was ripped. Best shape of his life. Looking like the MVP candidate. And the sodas won the war in the long run. He's come back out of shape, and it's not going well. Oh my gosh, bro, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, it's only right if I pick James Harden. Dude has been through the ringer over the last six months. Went on a world tour in strip clubs. You can catch him in China. You can catch him in Houston for no reason. <laughs> He's been surprisingly good after everyone was so down on him. Shout out yep. to him. He was an international Daryl Morey hater, and it worked out well. <laughs> Facts. All right. Third pick. I'm going to go with a rookie, Jaime Hawkins Jr., right? Mm. Mm. I did not think that he was going to be this good. I thought that he was going to be just a player that people put into a Damian Lillard trade and that he was <laughs> yeah, just going to be ready. Exactly. That he was just going to be somebody who Portland plays every, every, you know, once in a while that he was just going to be a cool player. Nothing crazy. He's really freaking good. And the Miami Heat have, you know, listen, I could pick the Miami Heat as a whole, but the Heat have shot up and they have a legitimate chance to get back to the NBA finals this year. And Whoa. It's, they listen, they low key do, but it's probably... Right. It's kind of in part because they have an added scoring boost because of Jaime Hawkins Jr. Uh, it's time to get negative. No, Jalen Green. Dawn, still oh, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, you're I right. Forgot about that. Damn. I did, I did forget about that. It's, a, it's okay. I think I might steal your pick. So, haha. Go ahead. But this is where we're going to go. Jalen Green, you failed me. You failed <laughs> me. I thought that you were going to get adults in the room i thought that you were going to get an actual basketball coach who was going to teach you how to play nba basketball at a high level you sir have not done any of that and you are looking like the worst player or not the worst player but the worst star player <laughs> of your draft class yeah you're hurt, you're hurt hard to heart. be hopeful for jalen green's future at this point where we've seen nothing no positive signs really hurt my heart yeah it's only fair if i go ahead and select greg popovich he is pushing 80. <laughs> That's and good. Listen, one of the greatest, probably the greatest coach of all time, but putting Jeremy Sohan as your point guard to ruin Wemby's Master grand era. entrance, you just ruined the entire NBA propaganda single handedly. You deserve this, hey, man. <laughs> yep. I'm going to go Carl Anthony Towns, my next pick. We were all saying mm. he would never fit with, uh, we were all saying he would never fit with Rudy Gobert. Eventually, you'd have to trade him. He's been great in his role. Shout out, Cat. Okay. Damn. And last but not like least, that. last but not least, give me Masai Ujiri. We thought he would never trade OG Ananobi. We thought it would take six first round picks. We thought he was glued to him for life, and he finally did it. OG Ananobi is a Nick. By far the biggest surprise of the season to me. I sent him, I sent him a hotline, a help hotline. <laughs> and I ain't gonna lie, maybe he accepted it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Just trace so, the next, please. Yeah, we all need it, please, dear God. <laughs> Next up, I think I might have to roll with Kawhi Leonard. He is fully back. He is Cyborg. He is Megatron. He is whatever Transformer that you want him to be. He is <laughs> annihilating everyone, bro. It just doesn't make any sense at this age with that injury. That was good. That's fair. That's fair. All right. I'm going to close it out with multiple players. Because I'm going with the entire Detroit Pistons team. <laughs> I never thought I would see the day when an NBA franchise lost 30 games in a row. You didn't win for nearly two months. So, that, is dis that is disgraceful. I thought that the Sixers team that intentionally was tanking would be the worst team that I ever saw in my life. And the Pistons said, hold up. 
I got you. I can I can do better <laughs> or I can do worse. And <laughs> their their 28 game losing streak shocked me. That That's is sick. <laughs> I can't believe we really witnessed that. <laughs> it's wild. That's a go. once in a lifetime type thing. Shit. Mm-hmm. Bro, we were tuning into to games 28 and 29 like they were playoff games just to see <laughs> if they would lose again. <laughs> They're hanging banners for breaking the streak. It's hysterical. Yeah. They start. <laughs> Right. That's our list of the most surprising players and abstract ideas of the season. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. There we go. What we got next? Let's do some trivia next. Mo, I think you have something Ooh. for us. Yeah. So over the next few weeks here and there, y'all going to see us run a little series. Donovan versus Isaac. <laughs> we like to see these two yap. I love seeing these <laughs> two go back and forth all the time. And I'm like, you know what? Let's put these two in trivia. And right now, we're going to have these two guys guess NBA players by their basketball reference page. Oh, okay. I see people do this. I love it. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. uh, I think the way we're going to do it is going to be six of these in total. And we're going to do like two different series, the best two out of three wins. And I'm just I'm just going to stomp Donovan out. I'm simple and plain. This is how it's going to go. Question, right? To answer, are we both going (laughs) to have a chance to answer? Do we have to buzz in? What is the process like? You better speak quickly because I talk fast. Exactly. You got to buzz we, are in. We buzzing? Gotta, are we buzzing? Can we, but, can listen, we buzz in? Listen. Yeah, Actually, just let's just do it. Just yap. Just yap. <laughs> you got to be on the edge of your seat. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Talk through your thought process, make a good radio, and then just say the answer as fast as you can. Exactly. I might not. I, listen, I might not make a good radio. If well, you better because this is a podcast. This is a podcast. You better talk. <laughs> if, we are try, if we are trying to win, mm-mm. Well, if you don't make a good radio, <laughs> well, I'm not going to post ahead. it it'll be bad radio, and you better make sure people see your win. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all I don't need people to guess, say I just need to know that bitch <laughs> guess <laughs> the NBA about. player by their basketball reference page okay Ooh, Denver. who is Ooh, this Denver. player a journeyman okay drafted by the Knicks Denver he's on currently on Washington is this Taj Gibson no he's not no 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 no, no. Uh, uh, wow. he's in Atlanta last Tours ACL. Now he's on Washington. Donovan, why? Ago. You haven't thrown out one number yet. Come on now. Say a name. I'm trying to, man. Relax. Relax. He was a scorer at some point for Denver. He scored a lot of points, then went to the Clippers in 2018. Ooh, why am I drawing a blank? Wow. Ooh. Was this guy shooting it's on at Atlanta? A kind of a shooter? tip of his tongue. He played nine minutes a game for Atlanta. He's in Donovan, Washington. I thought you he's were a Knicks fan. Right What's now? good, man? He's in Washington right now. Drafted by the Knicks. This is throwing me off. Denver Donovan Clippers. is this is this I got it I got it I got it is this Danilo Gallinari this is Danilo oh, Gallinari okay. you are correct ah. you are correct the man with one of the most horrendous Mohawks in NBA history there we go ah. oh yeah <laughs> one more for Donovan listen comeback season there we go Donovan congratulations thank you, you got your first point <laughs> what's next <laughs> Eric so Gordon player, don't even ask the question Oh, he is on a heater. Oh, my goodness. What gave it away? See, what, hap- I- what happened to good radio, right? <laughs> see, this, this, is what, this is what I'm saying. People try to set me up for the loss. <laughs> I see how we're going. Okay, okay. I see it. I see it. That's, that's fine. Listen, I see it. I can't help but know. It's just how I do things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those rocket years gave it away, I bet. Tie game. <laughs> Tie game. <laughs> Good hit. All right, what's <laughs> next? Last one. Drafted by Memphis, Houston. Oh, oh, this on, is this easy. oh right, my said, goodness. Fuck this off. is too fast. <laughs> Donovan, catch up. Oh this my gosh. Right six now, it's straight two all-star one. years in Toronto. There's two players that could be all time. DeMar DeRozan or Kyle Lowry. Easy. <laughs> that is beautiful. I thought, see, for a second, I thought the early years were going to throw one of you guys off, but y'all were on the money. Y'all did the, y'all did right. Oh, Donovan <laughs> tried to catch up. Or he just like spit it out. It wasn't even yeah. legible. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a gentleman sweep. The first victory. It's too easy. That was beautiful. Yeah. Too All right. easy. <laughs> yeah, come what? Back. <laughs> I came back, didn't I? Never in doubt. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> is those three? three? No, series two. We're playing two series per, per episode. Yeah, so it's two one. It's terrible. Now, <laughs> moving on to the next page. Say first Donovan, step. lock in. So, Russia to start his career. Houston Clippers. Who Philly is? now. Oh, is, a, uh, th- this is Patrick Beverly. Oh, Donovan one. said he is not letting you slide with this one, Isaac. Yeah, the Russia, the Russia got me. I was thinking international player. There you, you go. Not, yeah, you are not watching yeah. EuroBasket like I am. 
<laughs> in 2009 <laughs> in the fifth grade <laughs> i'm dead bro <laughs> i was streaming heavy okay, okay. bro yeah, you i'm used, to, be, I'm used to being down and out I'll, I'll come back again all right all right next up we have with the nets the spurs denver uh, most recently it, it, yep. is this richard jefferson this is oh my is. god, you're getting your chest uh, dumped out right now, Isaac. You got How me. do you not know? That's, that's a sweet. That's a sweet. That's a sweet. Damn. <sighs> that's let's, tough. Let's see if I get some glory points and go out with the, something on the yeah, board. <laughs> can you at least get some on the board? Please. Good let's God. See. People had their money on you, bro. Next up, <laughs> we have <laughs> Toronto Sacramento. was a journeyman. He plays in Indiana right now. He was on the Pelicans, yeah. the Nets. Wow. This man's played everywhere. Chicago. Yeah. Chicago, Indiana. This is Look. hard. He has no this would be a more of this. This should count as his, this should count as like three points if you get this one. Isaac, Draft to be honest in 2011. With you. Okay, he yeah, point seven for a field goals. You cut off the minutes played, so that doesn't help. Uh, wow, look at the points. points it don't game. matter. He's just yeah. on Indiana. He was Ooh. in Sacramento, Dallas. Yeah. He went from okay, so he was in Miami for a few years. Got traded to Minnesota. Is it James Johnson? Yes, it Let's is go. James Johnson, the Let's boy who go. recently got signed to Indiana just to beat ass. <laughs> <laughs> You're correct. That's crazy. <laughs> he That's got good. a 10 day contract for hands. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I was like, I want to give you a high five for that one because that was hard as fuck. <laughs> I did. I do this shit. I, know, listen, I can't win them all, but I'm gonna get on the board somehow. Yeah, exactly. So right now, ladies and gentlemen, this series for the full podcast listeners is tied 1-1. One, one. Yep. We'll keep track over the weeks. We'll have a running counter. Right now it's 1-1. One, one. We'll see where we pick up next week. And I need y'all to go ahead and place your bets for next week because I'm yep. interested. And it'll be I different type of trivia every Donovan. week. Right? Today was basketball reference. Next week it might be drafting who, I mean, uh, picking who's averaging more points per game. It's going to be different every week. Exactly. Ladies ah, and gentlemen, what a, what a game. I think it's time for a tier list. More TD3 bread and butter. Today we're going to do a tier list of embarrassing moments. Okay. Shaq Mo's also hosting this one, so I haven't seen these. Mo's hosting this one, so we'll see what you Ooh. got for us. Yeah, man. This, is had, this has been, over the last few years in the NBA, really one only outdated one. That's just absolutely fucking hilarious. So we're going to go ahead and look at... The, well, we're going to go ahead and rank the most embarrassing NBA moments. Okay. So first up, we got Isaiah Thomas saying... I just wanted a frosty. <laughs> this is back when <laughs> I <laughs> this love back this a couple moment. years ago. I love this when this he is, had an altercation with a fan. <laughs> Who this is one of my for? favorite moments. The fan? Yeah, easily. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Easily. Because it's a grown man, right? Flipping off Isaiah Thomas. And then you come back, he's like, oh, I just wanted a frosty. You're lame and greedy. Did what are you talking about? He didn't stand on business at all. He flipped so fast. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been saying all the most vile vocabulary in the world just to be like, my bad, I wanted ice cream. <laughs> ice cream, exactly. Nah, we we gotta put this in A. A tier. Okay. Very embarrassing. You're a chump. Okay. Chump is the perfect <laughs> word for this. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. <laughs> what about the time when Rajon Rondo pieced up CP3? Ooh, that was that was, was very embarrassing. Oh, uh -huh. Is this A tier? He got punched. That's not a tier. Punched on an NBA court. Yeah, yes. he got punched. I was thinking S. Yeah, I, he got punched by your arch I'm nemesis Rondo. I'm I'm saying this because Chris Paul does the thing where he puts. He tries to mush Rondo, right? He tries to act all big and bad, and then just bow bow, just gets two piece <laughs> combo. <laughs> And it's rough. like Rondo punched him with the frustration of the entire NBA. Everybody hates Chris Paul. Everybody finds him annoying. Everyone was like relishing the fact he got something coming. It's got to be S tier, I think. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is the speaking, of, speaking of Chris Paul, let's stay with him. What about that time when Steph Curry crossed this man into oblivion? <laughs> he crossed him into meme culture forever. Easy S tier. <laughs> he crossed him into internet <laughs> legend status for all the wrong reasons. Bro. I seen this man surfing on waves. I seen this man bowling. I seen this man <laughs> skateboarding. I seen him playing uh, Connect Four. It's crazy. He was doing everything. Everything this but was... basketball. <laughs> everything but defense properly. <laughs> <laughs> I seen him on the moon too. It's crazy. It's, it's very flexible. <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> it <was> great. <laughs> what about the time when Chris or what about the time when Paul George crossed him over in the playoffs? Another Chris Ball one? We're oh, running yes. it up on Chris Ball. 
<laughs> I ain't gonna lie. This is the one of the dirtiest. Was one of the dirtiest crossovers because it looked like he got hit with a stun gun. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, <laughs> whole body. Was, how did your that. body go like that? Just like, <laughs> yeah. Nice. And on top of that, too, Paul George made this shot too afterwards. Oh, it's okay, embarrassing. Yeah. It's a, it's a highlight then. Yeah, <laughs> this is etched into Paul George history forever. People in twenty years will be watching his highlights and seeing Chris Paul get embarrassed. You're part of history. Mm. You're S tier. <laughs> Speaking of history, what about the time when Kobe Bryant posterized Chris Paul? <laughs> this is a Chris Paul hate fest. This is the last one. Like an S tier. If Damn. Chris Paul gets embarrassed, we love it. S tier. S tier. S tier. <laughs> okay. S tier is the easy one. That's the easy one. Okay. So, what about the time when James Harden piggybacked ride Michael Carter Williams? Ooh. This is funny. I don't know this if this is peak prime foul baiting Harden too. Who is it more embarrassing for? That's the real question. It's really, it's really embarrassing for James Harden because you are the MVP of the league at this point. Grown right? man. <laughs> why are you doing this? You don't need to do this. They're gonna give you the foul call anyways. Why why are you acting like this? It's just a Grown it's, ass just man. Like, it's more of a lack of respect than embarrassing. So why are you as a grown man on NBA court committing horseplay? Get off that guy's back. <laughs> Are you six? Get off him. That's, that's a beat. Add it to the list. Add it to the list. <laughs> and at this point in time, Michael Carter Williams' career was handed by threads. This makes it so much worse. Yeah, man. That's a lot of weight in his back, this too. This is a B. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this uh, is a B. <laughs> <laughs> what about Swaggy P's infamous mystery meme? S tier. S tier. Yeah. This, this meme dominated. It dominated the internet for years, for like a decade. This is fantastic Fact. and You want to talk about etched into history, internet history. This meme is used to this day. It probably will be for forever as long as we're on Twitter. Like, it's such a good euphemism for so many situations. Facts. Exactly. If you, sh- you, if you hit a girl in DM and she don't respond, you're getting sent one of these in the group chat, my boy. <laughs> That's just how before? it is. <laughs> nah, from experience? me. <laughs> nah, never me, man. <laughs> I'm Ray Allen from this bitch. <laughs> uh, next up, Carmelo Anthony completely passing out in the middle of the game and nobody not giving a damn. He just out on the ground making snowflakes. Carmelo Anthony <laughs> can do no wrong. So this is an F tier embarrassing moment. <laughs> I'm not this embarrassed is, at all. <laughs> this is not. A, he meant to do this. He, <laughs> he feels no shame. It's part of the plan. See, Yep. He really said after after this game, he said, I legitimately blacked out and passed out for two seconds. Yeah, that's that's we all know that's like a, lie, a health issue rather than an embarrassing moment. I, I really? honestly don't know why you're making fun of it. It shouldn't be on this list. <laughs> it's kind of a sensitive <laughs> subject. He was complaining over. You really file. should pass up. So <laughs> keep keep it moving. Keep it moving. <laughs> I'll just let Donovan glaze in peace. He can put an F there. That's gross, bro. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> what about the time when the Toronto Raptors congratulated Dwayne Case for winning Coach of the Year after they fired him? Oh, that's a bad look. That's, that's an awkward. embarrassing that's a bad look. post. That's a bad look. It's a bad look for both ways, too, man. You lose your job and your, your former boss is telling you amazing job. What are we supposed <laughs> to do at that point? <laughs> so you did Where a great job. Eighth? You do a great job next year. Not for us. <laughs> a tier, S tier. Best of luck. <laughs> this might be uh, A. Yeah, we'll go A. Yeah, this might be A. After after he, he coached for the Detroit Pistons, it's just like he disappeared after that, bro. <laughs> yeah, heard family man. <laughs> Last one, Giannis arguing over his game ball. Ooh. Oh, this this was embarrassing. He embarrassing was, as hell. He was outlandish. And I think the fact that the Nassis also which just somehow involved brings it to another level of embarrassing. This is this is too mm. embarrassing. Panasis <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is drags it down. <laughs> yeah, you got your big bro caping for you when you're just like dead in the wrong. S tier. This is bad. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. How do y'all feel about the tier list? It's a good tier list. It's a great moment. I love this. I, I think it's perfect. Know. We ran it up on Chris Paul. We tend to do that. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> next thing we're gonna do we're gonna talk about something we talked about in the past in several different forms we're gonna talk about nba nicknames this time we're gonna change up the way we do it it's not gonna be a draft or anything like that we're just gonna rate them one to ten 
I'm going to show you some funny ones I found, and you're going to tell me what you guys think about them. Let's do it. This shit is my bag. I am good <laughs> as fuck when it comes to knowing what is hard and what is not hard when it comes to NBA nicknames. Okay, I'm a certified right. nickname giver. Let's do it. I guess. I sure you. <laughs> I suppose. Donovan. <laughs> my bad. I'm just trying nickname to nickname knower. All right. <laughs> First off, rate this nickname from one to ten. First off, we got Outback Jesus. What? But this bitch is hard. If you're from the South, this shit is hard as fuck. The South? You mean the South of the world? <laughs> Australia? No, nah, like South, of, like South, like, like Georgia. <laughs> no, nah, yeah, like that South. That's what I'm thinking. Florida? But now, <laughs> Florida don't count. <laughs> Alabama? They fucking yeah. Outback Jesus? You Outback talking about Jesus? Obama Shore? This is ridiculous. <laughs> I'll beg Jesus makes it, makes it sound like he is cooking the finest steak in the goddamn world. Boy. Barbecue uh, sauce everywhere. Shrimp on the bar. But I know that's blue and onion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this, is, this is a 10 out of 10 to me. This is no, amazing. it's 10. It's fire. This is this a 10. Is and why is his name Outback Jesus, too? Who gave this one? What's the comment? Yeah, it's so funny. Happy Australian. It's funny because it's just Matthew Della Vidova. Like, yeah. <laughs> they call him Jesus. It's just him. I love it, man. <laughs> Next up. <laughs> Big penguin for Draymond Green. I mean, oops. <laughs> <laughs> I <was> like, <"What?"> <laughs> huh? <laughs> a big penguin for Andre Drummond. Oh, Who gave man. Him his nickname? I don't know. He doesn't feel like penguiny. I don't know, what is around? reminiscent I is between he a Andre? And <laughs> I <a> guess. <laughs> <laughs> On the defensive end, I mean, I guess I see it. Yeah. He doesn't have well, like a that. stable stance. He just be. <laughs> I guess. I guess. Ain't I'm nothing not, hard not about a penguin. This is a zero. Oof. Two. I'll give it a two. I think it's kind of funny. I'll give, I'll give him a couple style points. <laughs> nah, Just a couple, a though. Huge L. <laughs> All right, next up, we got Stroking Joe. For hey, Isaiah yo. Joe. This is a <laughs> hey, freaky, dicky ass nickname. Who did this? <laughs> oh, my God. What are we doing here, man? Hey, you see the play? <laughs> he strokes that shit. Yo, <laughs> <What? laughs> from downtown. Listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> My little brother loves watching basketball. I am never watching an OKC game again because of this nickname. What am I gonna say when the when the announcer says "Stroke and Joe from deep"? What? <laughs> hey, I, if nothing is accurate, he's got a strap on him. Ten out of ten. <sighs> Five, You're man. Pushing Parental it. guidelines You're when I watch OKC games. <laughs> yeah. I didn't make the name. No, I say it out of 10. It's kind of fire. <laughs> no, you're crazy. You, now you're on watch, Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up. Juan Wick. 10 out of 10. Oh, oh my God. This 10. shit is hard as fuck. This is disgusting. Oh, my God. This going to start convulsing. <laughs> oh, my God. This is hard as hell. Juan, with a name like Juan Wick. I expect him to go ahead and give me a random 40 piece once April, <laughs> once <laughs> May hits. He sounds lethal as hell. No, this is incredible. This is one of the strongest thing names to come in the league in recent years. He's going to be one way for the rest of his career. He definitely has a Glock 40 in his hip at all times with his nickname. <laughs> he must. <laughs> he stays with it at all times, bro. And his game speaks that too. Fearless. I love it. My Mexican king. <laughs> Next up. Plum Dog Millionaire. It would be Plum fire, and it's clever. It really is clever. But this is Mason Plumley. Relax. <laughs> Relax. I just feel you like... You don't respect the Duke legend? Bro, you better respect Plum Dog. You watch your fucking mouth. I don't have to do anything. You, <laughs> you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fire, it's fire you, though. It's, it's a good nickname, but uh, once again, minus one point because you are Mason Plumley. Not so, eight nah. out of ten, then. You never Nine watched a Mason Plumby. You never watched a Mason Plumby mixtape in your life. That's <laughs> wrong with you, bro. Bro. This is did a ten. You? Exactly. Did bro. you? He throws the nastiest passes. Throws the no, nastiest he takes ankles passes. low key. <laughs> bro, why, why are you wasting three minutes of your life watching a Mason? Plumby you can't name it? another. You can't name more than three NBA players who went from shooting with the right hand from the free throw line to the left and still be making that bitch. He's him. <laughs> Fuck it. Ten out of ten. You convince me. Plum Dog Millionaire. Who did it? Ben, ben Simmons, Tristan Thompson. Uh, I think Sohan tried it too. You can't uh, do whatever, it. Whatever. Yeah, you trying to diminish greatness. Fuck out of here. <laughs> he told me I can do something and I did it. That's greatness. 
That's <laughs> <Never enough. laughs> whack. On, next on the spot too. No to the next one. To the next one. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Tiny dog for Brandon Ingram. Ah, yeah, this that's is whack. not that's whack. good. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good at all. Tiny <laughs> dog. I don't even understand it. He's not. It's not uh, a big dog. Tiny dog. He's just a little <laughs> bit of dog in him. <laughs> big dog. <laughs> yeah, this is this is this is not it whatsoever. I feel uh, disrespectful. When my name is Tiny Dog. What do you mean, Tiny? No fact. I'm six nine. nine. This feels kinda, like kinda this feels like Patrick Beverly's nickname. This feels like this feels like Jose <laughs> Alvarado's nickname. I can't give this yeah. to Brandon Ingram. This is misplaced. This is not. This is not it. Zero. Zero, Zero out of ten for lack of inaccuracy stuff. Next up, the big burrito from Mark Gasol. Hey, I've never heard this in my life. Yeah, I don't know if this is definitely charged, but it might be accurate because his game is stuffing people, not literally in the rim. What? But <laughs> what his game is stuffing people? <laughs> Yeah, like a burrito. He just is like all on you, you know? <laughs> okay. He just fills you up. I don't know. Yeah, he's just, his game is packed with everything. He's elite at defense. He can stretch that bitch out. He can. He has the post <laughs> move, bro. His passing is phenomenal. His game has everything, just like a burrito. I all guess. Right. Okay. Sure. But this might be 10. a five. Oh. There you go. You said all no. of that, that it like perfectly <laughs> encapsulates Marcus on, and then you're like, five out of ten. What are we doing? <laughs> it's Buggy, ten five out of ten. ten I'm with it. I'm with it. Five yeah. out of five. I'm five out of because ten. Because you can't be calling someone a big burrito in person, bro. Like, that's just... I'm going to question what type of person you are. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this, is, this is better typed out than it is said out loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next up. Thajic Johnson. That is I know. I know where this came from too. This came from the graphic of him doing some historical shit. That's so that's such a reach. Yep. <laughs> Listen, one of five players to ever do this. <laughs> History. I thought I thought his name was Thadric Johnson because he had a lisp. <laughs> oh Thadric <laughs> <laughs> Johnson. 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 That's, cr- <laughs> that's crazy. This is great. I love when role players get names that are like should be reserved for legends. Like Outback Jesus. This is just incredible. Yeah. He, he was a he was a great he was an incredible role player too. But this nickname just might not do it. Thadric. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. I, I love it. It's kind of hard. Give me all the now puns. I think about it. Yeah, nine out of, out of ten. ten. Fuck it, I, let's do it. Nine five. out of ten. Nine. <laughs> love it. Shout out Thadjik. <laughs> Thadjik. <laughs> Next up, the dancing bear for Draymond Green. It's the fighting bear for him. This is <laughs> uh, this, seven. This seven out of ten uh, feels weird. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this nickname. It's kind of hard. It. I've never seen Draymond Green dance. Yeah, I seen him do that whoop that trick dance, but he hasn't really <laughs> he hasn't really encapsulated this at all. This might be a two. Yeah, I thought I, it was hard yeah, for a second, then I thought about low. it. It's Draymond. It's kind of low for me. We can go harder. We can encapsulate Draymond's ethos better than this. A hundred percent. Facts. Exactly. Two out of ten. Next up. The Dorcher Chamber for Lou Dort. Hard. This is this is top ten nickname in the NBA right here this is for elite. any role player. This is eleven out of ten. You listen. Some people are called off night when they're strong defenders. I get it. You had an off night. And you see him. You got put into the Dorcher chamber. Is crazy hard, bro. This is a medieval <laughs> mid. Golly, this is a medieval nickname. This is fantastic. Yeah, hey, combining his nickname and combining his last name into that is perfect and this is exactly what we should be naming our role players right here we need more of this we need one of these for herb jones because he'd be putting people in hell facts 11 out of 10 yeah this is this is shit yeah 11 out of 10 is perfect <laughs> oh this is the last one let's go Damn. that's the last one and y'all that's like the end that. of the show we had a little bit of technical difficulties so we're at the end a little bit early appreciate y'all and you, what do you wish people comment if they're still here donovan the rat chewed my Wi-Fi. That's the technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> I can comment that. Comment the rat chewed our Wi-Fi. Yeah, comment the rat chewed Mo's Wi-Fi. Tell them the, the rats are winning again. Just, just give us some general comment about the rats. You guys get creative. I want, I want to see some, Isaac, some pizzazz. 
your Christmas gift was weak as hell. Do better next time. Next time, give me one of them big ass snap traps. All oh, the rap boys in the Now working? we're cooking. <laughs> nah, shit, weak as hell, bro. <laughs> That's funny. All right, we'll see y'all later.